Filipino. Really? He's um, just we're packing our car. No, 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 you can just, you're just telling us that it's real, you're, you're, you're ready, right? He knows, yeah. So it's just to call him now. Okay. See me? Okay. Call Ife for me, Ife. Tell him to come right away. But who am I calling? I'm just talking to Ife for, for now. And who else? Like yeah, so just tell her, let her be ready. Alright, thanks. Okay. Hey, you are welcome to Light Up Conference 2022. Come on. <laughs> and you know, this is brought to you by, come on, Master's Feet Network. And you already know, Yay TV. It's a beautiful year. It's another year. And we hope that if you're not here around the world, around the globe, you're watching. Don't touch it. And I'm, I'm hey, hey. If, yeah, yeah. If you were here last week, you or last year, right? Yes, I think that was uh, 2019. You were here in 20. Oh, true. COVID happened, right? Yeah, COVID. My bad. 2019. So tell me, what were your experience last year, and what are you looking forward to? Oh, my experience in 2019 was amazing. It was. Uh, I think we had. I can't remember the man of God's name, and we had Daniel Ojo minister. Nice. I also ministered in spoken words that day, and it was out of this world. Amazing. Whole experience. Um, t today, I'm looking forward to an invitation. And I can tell you, he had so much fun that today, he's co-hosting with me. <laughs> That's how we do. That's how we do. And this year, we have a whole lot loads up for you. This year, we have a whole lot load up for you. You can't imagine. I'm not going to give you a list. If you haven't seen the flyer, then come in in person. What would you like to say to the people out there? Well, all I just have to say is just come expectant. If you'll be joining online or if you'll be here in person, just be expectant uh, for a move of God. And also, most, more importantly, also important, you're going to have fun. It's not going to be a boring conference. It's going to be fun-filled and also you'll be imparted. So Very true because there's praise, there's worship, there's word. There's fun. And there's food. Oh, yeah, there's food. Sorry. Yeah, yeah there's food. <laughs> All right. Very importantly right now, I'm going to call on the one, the only, the person who God has put this mandate on for her to lead us through, you know, like keep on bringing this to us every year. So that we can get impacted, not just by a word, but by ministrations and songs. And, and 2019 was explosive. You can't imagine what 2022 would be like. So, like I said, don't touch it. She's here. Uh, can, can I get Abby girl? Like, I know she's busy around, but, you know, let's, let's get her to say one or two things to you out there. And for those of you driving down quickly, we're waiting for you. I am waiting for you. I'm, I'm here. Like, I'm going to introduce you when you come in and get you in. But there's a lot waiting for you in there, you know? Um, so I'm going to give Abigail a few minutes, and then she will join us. She has a few minutes. Not a few minutes could just be a few seconds, you know? When you say you're expecting somebody for a few minutes, and she comes in a few seconds, <laughs> you know what that means, right? Abigail, how are you doing today? I'm good, very good. Thank Beautiful. you. Beautiful. I see a lot of smiles. That smile on your face is it's amazing. Yeah, it's as a result of fulfillment. Like, when, when, once you have envisioned something and you see it coming to manifestation, definitely. Beautiful. You see that smile. Beautiful. What are expectations today? Um, now, if I'm naming my expectations, I would say four words. Uh, revelation, illumination, transformation, and encounter. Wow. Transformation, illumination, encounter, and transformation. And transformation. All the shans, man. <laughs> all the shans. We're expecting all the shans. So 2019 was explosive, and we had to wait 2020, 21 because of COVID. Yeah. 2022. I, I, like, I can't wait for this to begin. Yeah, you know? me too. Um, I don't know, man. 
What do you want to say to the people out there? So I want to say thank you to everyone connecting online. Thank you for joining us today. I believe the same anointing that is in this house is going to be replicated in your life today, and you will never miss out on anything. Just stay tuned and stay connected and see what God will do. Come on! Massive outpouring of God's spirit today. Come on, people! It's Light Up Conference 2022, and you got here the host, Abigail. Bless you. Don't touch it. Watch it. All right. Bye, everyone. All right, bye. See you. I'll see you, okay? And if you're driving down, make sure you're in a hurry.
victory. Empower us to go out. Oh yes, to diffuse the knowledge of the Lord. Oh yes, to the ends of the earth. This is the time. This is the season. And a pouring of the power of God. And a pouring of the glory of God. And a pouring of the spirit of God. Over the nations of the earth. In the name of Jesus. Over his people. Over the lands. In the mighty name of Jesus. He comes. The presence of God. The power of God. Oh yes. Flowing through the service. This conference. This day in the name of Jesus. Transformation. Illumination in the mighty name of Jesus. Revelation from the throne room of the Father. In the name of Jesus. Strongholds shattered. Oh yes. Renewal of our mind. New beginnings, new beginnings, renew strength to go on, to forge forward in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your move. Oh, throughout this sanctuary, throughout the atmosphere, we take over. Yes, Lord, the environment. We take charge. We take control. Contrary spirit. Where there is light, darkness cannot stand. Oh, yes, darkness is dispelled. Everything that represents darkness around this atmosphere, the light of God overshadows you. In the name of Jesus. We come against the plans of the enemy. We sanctify the atmosphere with the blood of Jesus. We sanctify the environment with the blood of Jesus. The hearts of men, whether in person, online, we sanctify with the blood of Jesus. We silence every lying spirit, every spirit that is contrary to the spirit of God. Everything that exalts is the knowledge of Christ, even concerning this conference, will pull down in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name, Lord. We worship and we adore you. Father, we declare this conference open in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Lord. Praise the Lord. I can't sense the, the excitement in the house. Praise the Lord. That was a power packed prayer session. Thank you so much. Um, please, you may all have your seats. Now, can you just turn to the person next to you and say, Did someone actually tell you today that you are looking so beautiful? You're not, if you're not sitting with anyone, you can tell that to yourself. Has someone told you that you look amazingly beautiful and handsome? You too, ma'am. You too. <laughs> you all look amazingly handsome. And I can already perceive the aroma of God's presence in this house. And I can assure you today, we're going to have fun. We're going to not just have fun. You know, my pastor will always say the word of God is, but the word of God is not funny. He always says that. So we're going to have fun today. We're going to be imparted. Um, you won't leave here the same way you came in. Okay? My pastor, will, we always say, the way you came in is your business, but the way you leave is God's business. Okay? So today, you're in for a treat. Okay? Um, so once again, welcome to the Light Up Conference 2022, powered by Master Speak Network. Yes, thank you. Please find something to do. Please do it well. The last time we had this conference, I think it was in 2019 or 2018, and I was part of that conference too, and it was, it was something else.
is running with a mantle that God has placed on his, on his life, the calling that God has placed on his life. That we've had conversations in the past, and when I see what he's, what he's doing with the calling God has laid on his life, there are times when I've been compelled to just call on him and, you know, just ask him, how do you do these things? Okay? Teach me. Talk to me. And he's so, he's so humble. He's so open to share his knowledge. He's, in fact, I would like to call him a relationship expert sometimes because he's very adept at building relationships. And he, to, he told me about that too. This man, this vessel, he is a worship leader. He's a vocal coach. He's an instrumentalist and a producer based in our beautiful land of Canada. He's a singer. And fulfilling the mandate and calling of God over his life. He has a strong passion to build altars of worship wherever he goes. This is his call and vision for ministry. People of God with Jesus joy, please join me in welcoming the one and only Minstrel Osas. Hallelujah. Said hallelujah. If you know that you're clapping for the king that makes kings. If you know that you're celebrating the one that can kill and make a life. If you know that you have come to Mount Zion, <laughs> the company of innumerable angels. Before the blood of the sprinkling of the New Testament. Before the mediator between God and man. Somebody celebrate the goodness of God in this house. Hallelujah. If you know that you've not come to play Hallelujah. Jesus. If you know that you've come to meet Yahweh this morning. Not me, not me, not me, not me. If you know you've come for an encounter. Yeah. For an encounter. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, I know I'm looking at the time. Uh, before I do anything that has to do with singing and worshiping this morning, I believe that everything that we do is revol or revolves around the scriptures. While I was praying early this, I, I like to pray for every meeting that I go to. While I, while I was praying, so God dropped something in my spirit. Matthew chapter six verse ten. It says the kingdom of God. Sorry, that this is the Lord's prayer, right? It says Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom. Whose kingdom? Talk to me, family. Thy kingdom come and thy will on earth as it is my question to you what do they do in the kingdom of God what do they do in the kingdom of God I'll show you what they do in the kingdom of God Revelations chapter 4 I don't want us to do anything with head knowledge let's do things with revelation right Revelations chapter 4 Verse 4 says, and round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had their crowns of gold. But before verse 4, yes, verse 7 says, and the first beast, so he's describing the verse 6 says, and before the throne was the sea of glass. Christos and the midst of the throne, round about the throne, four beasts full of four eyes. And these things and the four, 24 elders, all they do, 24 hours of the day, is the holy is the Lord God Almighty. That's all they do in heaven. That's what the kingdom looks like. And it says, let thy will be done on earth. What is the will of God that you pray? 
be in health, even as your soul prospering, right? So when we do things, we do them in the kingdom with revelation. So in the kingdom of God, they worship. So and we want that kingdom to as it is in heaven. So the kingdom of God must be enforced in light of conference. Somebody go ahead and worship. If you know that the kingdom of God is here, is here. Is here. Stretch your hands and worship them. If you know the kingdom is here. I love you, Lord. For your mercy. From the moment I wake up, still I lay my head down. I will sing of the goodness. To worship you, I live safe. this morning to worship you yeah. to worship you I live I live to worship you I live somebody lift it up to worship you to worship you I live I live to worship you I live I live to worship you, to worship you.
what a beautiful it is. To name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a name it is. Nothing contests to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of one time, everybody lift it up. What a beautiful name. What Jesus, everybody, Jesus, Jesus, come on, Jesus, hey, Jesus, everybody, Jesus, hey, Jesus, 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 in the morning, at noon, at night, everywhere, Jesus, 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 Jes
Jesus, 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 that's more than enough for me. That's more than enough. That's more than enough. That's more than enough. Ladies and gentlemen, I can stay in this place for the rest of my life. If all I say, if all I say is Jesus, 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 that's more than enough. Demons tremble at that name. If all I say. Jesus, when they don't like my face. Jesus, when they say you won't make it. Jesus, when you don't know where to turn to. That's the only name. That's the only name. Everybody, lift your hands and shout it. If all I say, if all I say, hey, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. If all I say, if all I say, if all Jesus, that's more, more than enough for me. If all I say, if all I say is Jesus, 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 that's more than enough. I see depression bow in that name. I see cancer bow in that name. I see the dead come to life. Come on, go ahead and put your hand, hand on, that on that place, place that doesn't, that doesn't have, have life. life. That, that place that you're in need. Come on, Come start, on, start shouting, shouting Jesus. If your, if your need, need is, is a child, child, put your hands on your stomach. Uh, Jesus. 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 If your, if your need, need is healing, healing. Come, on. come on, shout it. Jesus. 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 Hey. Hey. Jesus. Jesus. I feel, I feel healing, healing in this house. house. Jesus. Jesus. Back, Back pain. pain. Jesus. Jesus. Cancer. Jesus. Jesus. Come on, come on, everybody. Come on. If all I say, and if all I say, Jesus, 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 that's more than enough. And if all I say. Can we stretch our hands to heaven? More than enough for my family. More than enough. You have captured my heart consumed. Some songs are revelations. Have captured, captured and if, and if all, all I say, say and, and, if and if all, all I say, Jesus, 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 that's more than enough. For all I say. That's more than enough. If, if all I say, say Jesus, 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 that's more than enough. There's, there's revival, revival here, here today. Prayer, Prayer lives, lives that have been cold. cold. There's revival. You no, you no longer study, study the word. There's revival. There's revival. That's more than enough. enough. For the last time, and if all I say, if, if all I say is Jesus, 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 that's more than enough. And if all I say, if all I say is Jesus, Jesus.
got all the time in the house. Just healing in this house. Oh my God. Feel the glory in this house. Feel the glory in this house. Feel the glory in this house. Come on, Come on, somebody. somebody. Mm. There's, there's, a, there's move a move of the spirit, spirit in this house. house. Oh, oh, God. God. Ooh. Somebody, somebody go ahead and celebrate. celebrate. I, can't I can't keep going like that. Celebrate, celebrate the goodness of God, somebody. Celebrate the goodness of God. Yeah. Come, on, Come on, give, give three, three people, people a high five, five this morning. Three, three people, people a high five. five. My, My God, God there's healing. healing. Ah, man, I sense good goodness. Something Some, unusual in this room. My God. Three people, three people a high five. Come on, Come somebody, somebody give God, God a shout, shout in this house. house. I'm, a, I'm worshiper. a worshiper. I love to worship. Come on, somebody, somebody make, make, some make some noise in this house. I need, I need all the happy people, people to put their hands on it. Everybody, everybody, come on. One, two, two, three, three, four, four. Make, make some, some noise. I need, I need all, all the happy people, people to, to make, make some noise. Put a shout, shout on it right now. Come on, put a shout. I still can't hear you. Put a shout on it. Hey. Come on, put your hands together with me. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Say, say, I have come to, to give back, back to, to you. you. Everybody, Everybody, put your, put your hands, hands on me. Hey, hey, hey. I, I have come, come to say, say thank, thank you, Lord. How many, How many great people in the house? house? Here, we go, Here we go, say. I have, I have come to, to give back to you. you. To, to, to give back, back to you. you. Hey, hey, hey. I have come to say thank you. Here we go. Take all the praise, take all the praise. Take all the praise. Everybody, come on, say, take, take all the praise. Take all the praise. Shoot his arm. Shoot his arm. Everybody, take. Take all the praise. Take all the praise. Take all the praise. I have come to say, I have come to say thank you, Lord. Put your hands on it. Everybody, put your hands. I have come say, I have come to lift up my lift up my hands. Hey, to lift up my hands. Everybody, one, two, three, go. I have come to say thank you, Lord. I, I feel I feel like rejoicing this one. I have come. Say. I have come to lift up my hands. To lift up my hands. Lift up my hands. Hey, hey. I have come to say thank you. Everybody wants to take all the praise. Take all the praise. Shoot his Shoot his Take off. Take all the praise. Hey. Take all the praise. I have come to say, I, I have, have come to say thank you. Lord. Okay, break me down. Break me down. Some people came to this conference to spectate. Now look at somebody eyeball to eyeball. Ask them, are you here to spectate? Tell the person, I got nothing for you. Only Jesus can bless you. So don't be a spectator. Now walk up to another person. Tell that person, I got nothing to give to you. Only Jesus can bless you. Take all the praise. Take all, take take all, all the praise. praise. Take all the praise. Everybody, let's go. Take all, take, take all, all the praise. You deserve, you deserve, take all the praise. Take all the break. I have come to say, I have come. Okay, okay, 
Lord. Now, somebody put your hands like this. Let's get the blessings. Come on, say
If you know you never walk or don't shout hallelujah. If you know that you are never gonna be alone, shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. in your chest for me and say I'm blessed and highly favored I'm blessed and highly favored I'm blessed and highly favored by the Lord He's just thinking I'm blessed and highly favored I'm blessed I'm blessed I'm blessed and highly favored Let's sing it together. Bless and highly favored. I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm blessed and highly favored. By the Lord. Let's sing it together. Bless and highly favored. I'm blessed and highly favored. Let's sing it together.
and steam. and your team. That was amazing. Thank you so much. Yes. So, we are moving on. Uh, the next person that will come up is someone that is not a stranger to the house. Uh, we call her W-O-G, which is an acronym for Woman of God. Because she embodies, she, she embodies that. Married to someone I call my big brothers also. You know, and this couple, we call them power couple in the house of God. But I won't be focusing on the husband. It's all about the wife at this moment. Her name is Abigail Akintola. She's a young, vibrant, high spirited, and lover of God. She is passionate about soul winning and reflecting the love and light of God to the world. She strongly believes in being an extension of God's arm, of God's arm to her generation. She challenges teenagers, young adults, and adults to be God seekers, living a Christ-centered life, irrespective of their circumstances and upbringing. Her life and works are dedicated to impacting the world by raising God seekers and touch bearers to fulfill God's mandate and teaching them to develop an intense relationship with the Holy Spirit. She is the visioner and convener of Light Up Conference. People of God, with Jesus' joy and a standing ovation, please let us welcome the convener of Light Up Conference 2022, Abigail Akintola. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's so good to have every one of you here. It's a blessing to have every one of you here. I'm actually overwhelmed right now with the love, the honor, and everything I've said so far today. To God alone be all the glory. I hold nothing to myself. Everything I return it back to God, the doer of all things, the one who has given the giftings, the, the, the real visionaire himself. So I ascribe all the glory back to God. Thank you so much for the honor. God bless you. Help. Please, you may have your seat. Welcome to Light Up Conference 2022. This is the third edition of the conference. We had the first one in 2017 in Saskatchewan, in 2018 here in uh, Toronto, and this is the third one. And it's good to, um, to be here today. The, the enemy fought, but victory belongs to Jesus. Here we are today. And we thank God for all he has done, that the devil could no longer curtail us, because we know that in Christ we are at liberty. Yeah, so I just want to do the, just share the vision about Master's Feet Network, what the Light Up Conference is all about. And uh, for people who are just coming or attending for the first time, so you have an idea. Of Sorry. So you have an idea of what we do and who we are. So um, at Master's Feet Network, we are, we have the Christ mandate. <laughs> rested upon Jesus while he was here on earth. We have the same anointing in our lives and we know that he will make it happen for us in Jesus' name. 
and our vision is to raise God's seekers through fellowship and partnership with the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we can do nothing. Because the harm of the flesh will definitely fail, but only Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit can ever fail us. So we believe in the Holy Trinity and their individuality. That Jesus is the Son of God, the Holy Spirit is our helper, our comforter, and God is our Father. And we believe that Jesus is the standard, the Bible is our mirror, and heaven is our home. Anything outside of this is, is not God's truth. So God's truth is the standard, and we validate that as a result of what we do and how we act. So Light Up Conference is just a gathering of all believers coming together under the umbrella of what unites us together as Christians. So we know like there are different denominations. We have the Pentecostal, we have the Anglicans, we have the Catholic, but we always believe that one thing unites us beyond what divides us like doctrines and denominations. But we want to focus on Jesus, the only one that unites us. And that is what actually matters. Irrespective of where we are coming from, the denomination, once we believe in Jesus, that he is the son of God, he died and he rose again for us. That is where our salvation is. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, that's all I have for the vision sharing. So if you, have, if you need more information, you can visit our website, www.mastersfit.org. And you can shoot us an email, info at mastersfit.org. We, um, we are not a church organization. We are just people with passion for Jesus, just running the vision that he has laid in our hearts to do. Thank you so much, everyone, and that will be it. So on to the next, we have prophetic declarations because uh, this conference is all about the move of the Holy Spirit. So we believe that River has come to Canada, and we know that without Jesus, without the Holy Spirit, there's nothing we can do. So we want to proclaim the, the um, want to do a, pro a prophetic declaration on provinces in Canada, speaking forth and calling forth all that the Lord intends for the um, nation of Canada. So we have uh, different pastors, ministers of God, who are assigned to, to do the prophetic declarations today. And uh, we would have them in batches. Um, yeah, who we'll have them in batches. So I'll call on the first two people that are already available to um, come and do the prophetic declaration. So the first person how I'll call on is um, Pastor James Olishesi to come and do a prophetic declaration on Manitoba and New Brunswick. Praise God. Praise the living Jesus. Whether the devil likes it or not, we are going to take this land for God. Are you in agreement with me this afternoon? Praise the Lord. Uh, we're going to rise up. Uh, we're going to pray. One thing I want us to first do is to thank God for the beautiful country we have. We, in some part of the world, I was in, I was in Texas uh, about two weeks ago, I, and I fellowship with one of the biggest uh, redeemed church in that place. Immediately we drove into the premises, the first thing we saw was big uh, police um, cars, they, they are big SUV. And I was wondering, I said, could there be anybody having a problem on Sunday in the church that they've come to arrest it? I was just sharing that with my wife. My wife said, well, maybe. And we got in very beautiful building, sparkling and excellent service to our God. Then after the service of God, I, I, met, I met the pastor and we were just in and we were chatting. Uh, and I just raised that. Now he said in this week that people could just come in with God. And that's why the police are there just to watch over the church and the people of God. But if you look at the, I, I, I came into this building majestically like a royalty, without any guide or guard, without any fear. And these are the things we are enjoying in this land. So the first thing I want us to do, before you can take a flight into conquest, you must have some peace all around you. A peaceful mind is able to think right. When you are in the midst of overwhelming situations, you might even take a wrong decision. For people to come up with a program like this, it's also because the environment gives the enablement. So I just want us to go and thank this almighty God. The one that has given you and I a privilege to be part of, it, of this, to be in this country. 
where there is no warfare, there is no fear of bandits or criminals or, or kidnapping and all that. It's not because Canada is righteous or Canada has the, the, uh, the most holy people in the country. But God has shown mercy on, on us as a land. Let us just thank him. Let us magnify his name. Let us thank him for this program also. Almighty Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Thank you because indeed you love us as a nation. Thank you because you have not given us the mind of reprobate. We are giving you the praise that is due to you once again. Ancient of days, accept our thanks in the mighty name of Jesus. For everything you have done for your church, for the governance of this city, of this country as a whole. We say to you alone be the glory of the honor and majesty. In Jesus' mighty name, we are afraid. Now we're going to declare. The Bible says, who is he that speaks? If God has not spoken, he declares the end from the beginning. Isaiah chapter 46 verse 10. So the God that we serve has given us a mandate. You know the Bible says we are workmanship. So a lot of people don't know that, you know, in a, in a, in a particular scripture, and Jesus quoted it and said to them, don't you know that ye are God, and ye are the children of the, of the Most High. Psalm 82 verse 7. So we are going to use our authority today to declare. The Bible says the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The world and them that dwell in it. So we are going to declare and take, is it New Brunswick now? I think. Manitoba and New Brunswick. We are going to take it for the almighty God. Psalm 91 make us to understand that day after day, auto switch. It now forgot to say that there's no way their voice is not heard. We are going to declare to the almighty God our voice as a church. Our voice as people of God. Our, our voice as the follower of Christ will be heard in Manitoba, in New Brunswick. Every nook and cranny of, that, of those cities shall be delivered unto the almighty God. The almighty God will raise leaders, we raise champions, we raise kingdom mandate people. Leadership will be people that will do God's bidding across board from the local municipality to the entirety of the province in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to pray, 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 pray. Talk to the almighty God. His ear is not heavy that he will not hear. Neither is hand so short to deliver. As you are saying, I'm hearing. As you, as, you, as you are thinking, I'm hearing. As you are saying it, I'm doing it. Let us say to the almighty God, let us be the one to do this in the name of our God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Almighty Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. You are the only ability that cannot fail. You said when you will walk the earth, you said my father walked and I'm also walking. Father, we are on the same path. We are walking. We are ready. You said according to the volume of what was written concerning you, you have come to do God's will. Almighty God, we surrender every saint in the land of Manitoba and New Brunswick and the entirety of Canada into your heart. We come in the volume, Kabo Zakadaya, in the volume of what is written concerning our destiny to do your bidding, Almighty God. Ancient of days, according to your word, that one of us will pursue a thousand. And two, we take ten thousand to flight. In the fullness of your grace and power, we take the land of New Brunswick and Manitoba. Your governance shall prevail. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ancient of days, according to your word, that we are the epistle written in hand. By the time your goodness and mercy, greatness beyond measure, begin to flow in the church, in the life of your people, the province will beckon unto them. Oh, we need you. Come and give us a support. Father, let this be our testimony in the name of Jesus. Ancient of days, we shall be the head and not the tail. We will take the land for you 
it will manifest greatness. And the kingdom of heaven shall be populated to the shame of the devil. Lord, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Continue to reign in majesty. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for the powerful session of the prophetic declarations. We believe that as we have spoken in the hearts of our Lord, he has answered us and we will see the manifestation in Jesus' name. Uh, the next person. Amen. 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 So the next person I would like to call is uh, Pastor Shubola Awleri. She is the first lady of this house. Please help me honor her. She will be praying about uh, Prince Edward Island, Quebec, Saskatchewan, and Ontario. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. We've already given praise to God concerning the whole of Canada. And thank you so much, Pastor, for that prophetic declaration. You know, one thing I want to massage your heart with is what the word of God says concerning you as a vessel. What I realize is that, you know, when people come into this land, people that know God, people that already advocate for the kingdom, they come into this land, they get involved with, so to speak, the busyness of life, and they forget that they are ambassadors to this land. You have a purpose, you have a vision, you have a mandate wherever you go as a child of God, so that they would know, they will see the light of God in you, and they want to know who you are in the name of Jesus, not to chase after the things that all other people are chasing after, because the word of God says, seek ye first, seek ye first, and all these other things shall be added unto you. That is what the word of God says. So as a child of God, I'm not even talking about those that don't know God. As a child of God, your mandate is to make a difference. Your mandate is to know, for people to know the God that you serve. That is why we are here. You are the light of the world. The city, the one that is set upon a hill, that cannot be hidden. Your greatness cannot be hidden as a child of God. You cannot hide who you are. Then you don't know who you are. That is what the word of God says. The word of God says in Mark verse 15, that you should, Mark 16 verse 15, that you should go ye into the world. Go ye into the world and, and preach. preach the gospel to all creature. That is, you just don't gather. Yes, you can have your fellowship, but you go ye into the world, into where you are sent into, your, your, your careers, everywhere. That is, go ye. That is what it means. That is, we should spread the word of God, the beauty of Jesus. That is what it means. That is when people will know who your God is. And as I was praying, you know, the God reminded me of what he said in the book of Matthew 18, verse 18. And I'm going to read it in the Passion Translation. It says, whatever you forbid on earth will be considered forbidden in heaven. Hallelujah. And whatever you release on earth will be considered to be released in heaven. Now we're going to release and take authority over all those coldness. There's just a coldness. You just don't, some people just believe that, you know, this land is not even pliable for the atmosphere, the kingdom of God, so to speak. Everything is just so cold that you need to move to territories where there is a great move of the spirit. That is the reason why he has sent you here, for you to make that difference, to make it hot for the enemy, that he has to run away because that is who you are. So we're going to take authority Authority, we're going to proclaim concerning these provinces, PEI, Quebec, Saskatchewan, and Ontario. In the name of Jesus Christ, we take authority right now. We bind that demon from the pit of hell. Everything that results to coldness, everything that makes the heart cold, that does not make the scripture pliable for the move of the spirit, we take authority over you right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Canada will know God in the name of Jesus Christ. We decree and declare the move of the power of the almighty God in the city, in the province of Kiev, Quebec, Saskatchewan, and in Ontario.
you that in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, people will be able to worship you freely. The laws will be changed concerning to favor us. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, uh, we take authority over you. We forbid every coldness, uh, anything that is anti-God. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, we take authority over you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, uh, we proclaim, oh God, uh, the move of the Spirit in this province, uh, in the whole of Canada. In the name of Jesus, uh, that they will know indeed uh, their people has been set forth to proclaim the gospel. In the name of Jesus, uh, we take authority over you, your principality, you strong, you hold, stronghold. Thank you, Lord. Stronghold over these provinces. We pull you down now. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, anything that is anti God, uh, we pull you down now. Uh, in our system, in our organization, in our laws. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, we take authority over you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we give you all the praise. We thank you, God. Based on what you said, whatsoever we forbid, Lord, will be forbidden in heaven. You are the one that has given us that authority. You will not do it for us. We have to do it. And therefore we forbid, we disallow anything that is against you in our land. In the name of Jesus Christ, we will be ambassadors for the gospel. In the mighty name of Jesus, that the light of Jesus will shine in this land. In Jesus' name we have received and we believe it is done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah! It's a powerful session, and we believe it is established in Jesus' name. Uh, so, the third person on the list for this session will be uh, Pastor Johnson here that day. We'll be praying on the, the NWT, the Yukon, and none of us. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, I didn't know that the theme of today's meeting will align with my message tomorrow. And I know that when the Holy Spirit begins to give me a message, God has given me that message two months ago. That we are kingdom gatekeepers. We are kingdom gatekeepers. As gatekeepers, you determine what you allow to enter, and you determine what you allow. Kingdom is about influence. So whoever has the key, determine what comes in, what goes out. So you are the gatekeeper. Jesus gave us the key. He didn't take the key to heaven. <laughs> After he does everything, you know, he went to hell, he does everything, he gave us the key of the kingdom. He said, whatsoever you bind on that. You see, everyone is not going to do anything <laughs> until you take action. Yes, sir. Let me tell you, when you are at the gates, things are happening at the gates. Every city, the most vulnerable place is the gates. Yes. Business transactions take place at the gates. The kings, they dwell at the gates. In fact, if you are not at the gates, you don't have a voice. Nobody would listen to you. When you are at the gate, when you speak, everybody listens because you have power. You have authority. So I want you to know that God has given you that key. Amen. And you have to use it. Amen. Over your family. Over your job. You say the enemy will come after you. He said the gate of hell will not prevail. It doesn't mean they won't come. Yes, sir. But they can't prevail. Yes, you have to stand your ground. Yes, sir. I'm praying that God will raise people like Nehemiah. Amen. Who is passionate about what is happening to his people. And he said no. I can sit down here. He fasted and prayed for 40 days before he started a trip to deliver his people from bondage. And when he got there, what the enemy was doing was to attack him. Different levels of attack. What did Nehemiah do? He built the gates and he said people there, he said, you are going to be the people that will keep this gate. You determine who comes in. So I want you to know you have a mission. You have a calling. Your job is beyond just being in church. When you get out there, God has assigned you to touch soul, to minister to life through your business. Everything that God has committed into your hand is an opportunity to bring the influence of the kingdom into those areas. So I want you to know that you are God's ambassador. 
you are God's agent. He has given you that key. And you can stand on the ground of the authority of the name of Jesus to determine who is going to be loose and who is going to be bound. One thing that the devil used is sickness. Yes, sir. He used sickness to keep people in bondage. But you see, Jesus saw a woman that was paralyzed for 18 years. And Jesus said, woman, thou art loose. Yes, so you use the same key. So I want us to pray over all our provinces. Every sickness, every infirmity that the enemy has put on people. Because Jesus came and he died on the cross so that people can be free from sickness. So I want you to pray for healing over all our cities. Every sickness. Even the ones that they have labeled incurable. We declare in the name of Jesus. Freedom. Freedom from sickness. Freedom from sickness. In the name of Jesus. Everyone that is sick. We anoint them with the oil of the Holy Ghost. We declare. Freedom from every sickness. In the name of Jesus. Father we declare. That Lord people are set free from sickness. In the name of Jesus. Oh thank you Jesus. I want you to also pray. You see, one of the weapons that the enemy also uses is poverty. Because, you see, business transactions take place at the gates. People sign negotiation agreement at the gates. So we want to tell God that God, every spirit of poverty that keeps people as a slave in bondage, I declare freedom. In the name of Jesus, I want you to pray for your family. Pray for every province in Canada that we are going to flourish as kingdom people in every area. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, oh God, our Lord, every province, business-wise, we are going to flourish. Kingdom people will bring kingdom influence into every province. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit of poverty, we declare you born in our territory. We declare you born in our territory. We lock the gate to every spirit of poverty. The abundance of God's grace is released in the name of Jesus. Every business ideas I speak into your life, you will drive. You will drive. You will drive. You will drive. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want you to also speak against every sin. You know, there are some things now that has become known. This world that we are growing in, they will be talking about things that are sinful. And you, you can't even talk about righteous things. They say, no, 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 don't bring that one. But they are talking about all other things that are sinful. Sin is a reproach. And that's why Jesus died on the cross. I want us to pray that righteousness will reign Amen. in our cities. Righteousness will rule in all our cities. I want you to just declare over all our city that the righteousness of God will rule over all our city. In the name of Jesus, every city, every, every sin, every spirit that brings sin into our cities, we declare, we bound you, we lose, we lose righteousness. To reign in our city. In the name of Jesus. We lock every door to every sin. In the name of Jesus. Fornication, adultery, whatever the enemy is using. To keep people in bondage. Today you are loose. In the name of Jesus. We release fresh grace upon our city. For transformation. In Jesus. Mighty name we pray. Amen. Father. As an oracle of the almighty God. You have given us as an assignment, as your ambassador, to represent you here. And we are not just there with our own power. You paid the price and you gave us key to lock and to unlock. To determine what we are allowing and what we are not allowing. Therefore, Lord, we declare that healing will flow in all our cities. In the name of Jesus, every sickness... Lord, they are healed in the name of Jesus. We also declare, Lord, abundance of wealth will flow into the kingdom. In the name of Jesus, every spirit of poverty will lock you out. In the name of Jesus, Father, you will bless the work of our hand. And you will prosper us in every area. In the name of Jesus, 
Father, we also declare every spirit of sin that has been pervading around in our cities. Lord, we pray that righteousness will rule. Righteousness will reign. In the name of Jesus, to you be all the glory, all the honor, and adoration. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's give God a clap offering. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, sirs. Please, you may have your seat. Thank you, Pastor James Olushe. I, I, I'm sorry if I, if I murdered your name. <laughs> Um, Pastor Johnson Ilade and um, Pastor Mrs. Shubola Awuleri, thank you so much for those powerful prayers. Um, who is charged up here today? Let me see a wave of hands. Let me see a wave of hands if you are charged up today. Everybody's hands should be waving. I won't stop till, we, till everybody starts waving their hands. Everybody, everybody, everybody. Good, good, good. Now we are there. <laughs> All right. Um, so, in a moment's time, we'll be bringing up uh, Mr. Losas again. So if you thought that you've danced, you danced before or you worshipped before, you are in for another treat. So uh, with, Jesus, uh, I'm sorry. with Jesus Joy again, please welcome Mr. Losas and his team. Hallelujah. Just in the next five minutes, can we just worship quickly? The next five minutes, can, can we just rise and just... Just five minutes. This is a real quick one. We just want to declare the Lordship. We've prayed. We've spoken the word. The Bible says the word is in your mouth. Speak it. And we've spoken the word. Come on, somebody. Raise your hands. And there is only one name. And there is only one name. Can we sing it together? Power to say. That's got power to say. Everybody, there is only one name. Let me hear you sing. Say, there is only one name. Can we declare it today? Everybody, lift it up. Say, there is only one name. That's got power, power to say. Oh, that's got power to say, power to say. Just one more time. Everybody, declare it. Say. There is only one name. There is only one name. That's the only name that can save us. There is only one name. He has power to save. At the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Power to save. Can we lift it up and declare it? Ah, God save. Ah, God. He's champion. He reigns forevermore, forevermore. Let me see all the excited people declare it. One more time, our God. Our God say, our God. He's champion. He reigns forevermore evermore come on open your mouth and declare forevermore forevermore lift your hands and say every knee say every knee will bow down hey every tongue will confess it every tongue would come what's that name say jesus christ you alone just one more time, just one more time. Every knee will bow down. Every knee will bow down. Every tongue, every tongue will confess. Eh? And Jesus say, Jesus Christ, you are Lord, you are Lord. Everybody lift your voice and say. Feel the glory forever, forever, forever. All over the building, one more time. Ah, God. He's 
champion. He reigns forevermore. Forevermore. Can we lift our hands, everybody? Somebody lift your hands with me. Say, I. Break out, Holy Spirit, come now, hey, a heaven over now. Lift it up, lift it up, say, I'm shut Lift it up, say, Shane's be broken, Holy Spirit. Everybody lift your hands up on said atmosphere ship 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 now shut up can't allow the boat pray Your God, hands with me. Ha, oh, God. All of the building, raise it up, raise it up. Forevermore. Let heaven hear you. Forevermore. Just two more times. Ah, oh, God, everybody say. Champion. Champion over sickness. Champion over depression. Champion over failure. Champion over disappointment. He's champion over heartbreak. He's champion over the works of darkness. I got say, I got his champion. Can we lift our hands in this place? Said atmosphere. Shift now. Woo. 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 We're in the company of innumerable angels. One more time, said atmosphere hot. Ooh, hey, la taba ya na moj. Chains be broken. It's on somebody now. It's on somebody now. Take 10 seconds. Shift now. Chains be broken. Break out. Ooh. Come now. Heaven open. The heavens are open. I got good news for you. The heavens are open. The heavens are open. The heavens up. Shift now. Chains be broken. Pray. Holy Spirit. Come now. He's here already. He's here already. He's here already. Declare it for the last time. Everybody said, Hot most fair. Say, Hot. Hey, la taya la da bosh. Rata ta 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 la da bush. Chains be broken out. Break up. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Come now. Heaven over. Heaven over. 
Madam, please come. If I continue like that, we won't finish. Atmosphere. Spirit of the Lord is here, no doubt. I feel it in my spirit, and it's not just a feeling, it's an experience. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Beyond words, beyond our expectations beyond what we can expect, beyond our imaginations. Thank you for expressing your spirit amongst us. Father, we thank you. We honor you, Lord Jesus. Jesus. When the spirit comes, there will be no words to say. Oh, when his power comes, there'll be no words to say. Oh, this is our experience today that we are short of words. When the spirit comes. There'll be no words to say. Oh, when the power comes, there'll be no words to say. has been our testimony today thank you Jesus our Heavenly Father we thank you we give you glory we give you praise we exalt your holy name indeed you are the doer of all things we ascribe all the glory back to you no man is worthy to share in your glory it is to you Lord Jesus we thank you thank you for how far you have brought us how you have started with us we thank you for starting with us on a powerful note, on a great note, greater than our, our, our imaginations. Thank you for surpassing our understanding. Thank you for your spirit finding expression in every heart here tonight. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your grace that is resting upon every one of us. Thank you for your glory that has filled this room. Thank you for this is another Pentecostal experience that we know that we will not recover from. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your manifest presence. We thank you. We give you glory. We give you praise. From the depth of our heart, Lord God, today we have come to say thank you. Thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for all you're doing. Thank you for all you continue to do. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this is indeed an experience. And we thank you, Lord God, for the privilege to be a particle of this. We pray, Lord God. That Lord Jesus, even as we continue in this session, we pray that your mighty hand will rest upon us. And I decree, Lord God, that even as you have sent your word today, I decree, Lord, that your word will come powerfully, Lord, unhindered. And Lord, it will fulfill the purpose for which you have called it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Redeemer, because you are worthy for praise. In Jesus' mighty and glorious and wonderful name, we have prayed. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Thank you so much, everyone. It's indeed an experience for me. Um, I believe you're having the same experience and your spirit man is charged up to receive all that the Lord has for us today. In Jesus' name. Um, first of all, I would love to acknowledge the fathers we have in the house. Um, I can't do anything without acknowledging them. Um, thank you so much 
Papa for coming here today. Thank you for honoring us with your presence. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you for being a gift to us and the body of Christ. We appreciate you. Thank you so much, sir. I also like to acknowledge the presence of the pastor of this house. He's my pastor, Pastor Bayer. Thank you so much for all that you do for the kingdom. Thank you for releasing your boats for Jesus. And we know that as a result of this, that 1,000 souls that we are looking for, it is established in Jesus' name. Thank you so much, Pastor Shibola, for being of great support. Thank you for all that you do for the kingdom and for us too. We appreciate you. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Johnson, for coming here today. It's an honor to have you here as well. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Pastor Runke, for being a blessing to us. She started us in prayer for those that came early. Thank you so much, ma. God bless you, ma. Thank you so much, Pastor James Olishesi. Thank you for honoring us with your presence. We appreciate that. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Losars. Thanks for being a, uh, a blessing to us, of immense blessing to us. We had an amazing time of worship and... If not because of time, we would have continued in that overflow. But we pray that the Lord continues to increase you too, in Jesus' name. Thank you so much, Minister Michael Manhattan. We're going to have him later on today. Thank you for gracing us with your presence too. God bless you. Thank you so much. Um, today, I'm not the one preaching, but um, God has laid some things in my heart that will be like, I would like to share with everyone here today. And I believe that um, God has a purpose for which he, have, he has called this. And I believe that that will definitely come to manifestation because this is his plan and his mandate. And we will see it come to fruition in Jesus' name. I would like to start with the Bible reading. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 21. And I will be reading the Amplified Classic Version. So this is our scripture for the day. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all assembled together in one place. When suddenly there came a sound from heaven, like the rushing of a violent tempest blast, and it filled the whole house in which they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues resembling fire, which were separated and distributed, and which settled on each one of them. And they were all filled, diffused throughout their souls with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in all the different foreign languages or tongues, as the Spirit kept giving them clear and loud expression, in each tongue in appropriate words. Now there was then residing in Jerusalem Jews, devout and God-fearing men from every country under heaven. And when the sound was heard, the multitude came together and they were astonished and bewildered because each one heard them, the apostles, speaking in his own particular dialect. And they were beside themselves with amazement, saying, are not all these who are talking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own particular dialect to which we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and the province of Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya about Cyrene and the transient residents from Rome, both Jews and the pro proselytes to Judaism from other religions, Christians and Arabians too. We all hear them speaking in our own native tongue and telling of the mighty works of God. And all were beside themselves with amazement and were puzzled and bewildered, saying one to another, what can this mean? But others made a joke of it and derisively say, they are simply drunk and full of sweet intoxicating wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. You Jews and all you residents of Jerusalem, let it be explained to you so that you will know and understand. Listen closely to what I have to say. For these men are not drunk. As you imagine, it is only the third hour, about 9 a.m. of the day. But instead, this is the beginning of what was spoken through the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days. God declares that I will pour out my spirit, I'll pour out of my spirit upon all mankind, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy, telling forth the divine counsels, and your young men shall see visions, divinely granted appearances, and your old men shall dream divinely suggested dreams. Yes, and on my men servants also, and on my maid servants in those days, I'll pour out of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, telling forth the different counsel and predicting future events pertaining especially to God's kingdom. 
and I will show wonders in the sky above and on the, on the earth beneath, blood and fire and smoke and vapor. The sun, shall, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the obvious day of the Lord comes, that great and notable and conspicuous and renowned day. And it shall be that whoever call upon the name of the Lord, invoking, adoring, and worshiping the Lord Jesus, the Lord Christ, shall be saved. May the Lord bless his word. Um, in the spring of 2018, I, I walked like just five minutes from church. So um, on a Sunday service, pastor called that if anyone desires to, to have impartation, that um, they can come over to church on a Tuesday afternoon. So when I finished work, I was so tired that day, and I was like, no, this one, I'm not going to miss it because I know the impact of impartation. So when I left, I came to church. Uh, when I came in, I met pastor in his office, and pastor said, we're still waiting for orders. Let's uh, wait for a few more minutes. And when we did, no one came, and pastor said, let us start. I was sitting right over there, and he said, let's start. So he started praying. So I had the opportunity of having all the time and everything all to myself. And like while we were praying, like he was like he laid hands on me, he was praying for impartation. And um, after 45 minutes, I think Pastor Pastor Ronke came in too. So she joined us and she, they started praying. So both of them they were there. And that day I knew that I got something from the Lord. I knew like it was special. Not by power, not by mind, but I know like it's there's a transference of grace, which is what I am also expecting to get today um, as a result of this conference. So later on um, that year, I think two months after, I was on my way to work again. I left the job I was doing here to another place. And that morning, it was like I heard God speaking into my spirit. Like, you know, someone speaking to you and you are writing. Uh, God told me specifically that revival has come to Canada. And um, I was so excited that day that I almost, I almost like turned back like go home and say no I'm not working today like the joy I had I've, I can't it's something I couldn't experience like I couldn't sorry I couldn't express like I, I couldn't I don't know the, the right words to use like to explain that because um yeah the kingdom of God this is God's business so I see it as this is my father's business I I see to it to make sure that by the strength he has given to me I don't just uh do things anyhow because he has given me so much so in return for what he has done, I need to give his kingdom like my all and my best, my energy, my time and everything. So when God told me then, I, I, I talked to two people. I actually talked to Kenny that day and I talked to Ife too. So I talked to them, I told them, I said, this was what I heard in my spirit. They were like, yeah, whatever God is telling you to do, do it. So and here we are today after four years. It's coming to pass, it's coming to manifestation. To God alone be all the glory. He's the doer of all things and he keeps his word. No matter how long, how far it may be, that the vision is still there. And you keep pressing, pushing, and trusting God to bring it to manifestation. I know that today is a fulfillment of prophecies of, of, of prophecies of declarations that the fathers of faith had made concerning Canada. And I'm grateful to God that each and every one of us, we are partakers of this, fulfilling that prophecy. And it's such a beautiful thing to behold, and I thank God for that. So uh, going back to our theme, the theme says a move of his spirit. Um, so what is a move of the spirit? A move of spirit, in my own definition, I'll call it simple word, revival. Uh, revival is not an event, it is an experience. So because I think while growing up, uh, because I was in the core of a Pentecostal church, I often hear my parents or other people, church members saying, we have seven days of revival, we are going to church, we are going to revival. I've heard like, like all my years. And over the years, um, God opened my eyes to see that revival is not just an event you go to. It is an experience. It is what you experience. So uh, those people, they were not totally wrong, but I would say maybe they were partially incorrect. So um, going at, at the, looking at the basic definition of revival, just random, not the Christian definition of revival, it means an improvement in the condition of something. Or, to strength, or strength of something, or an instance of something becoming popular, active, or important again. 
which means that that thing has been in existence, but maybe due to one thing or the other, it has become latent. But now you're bringing it forth to show forth its importance again and to improve on that con the condition of that thing. So whatever thing, be it our prayer life, be it our word life, be it like our Christian life that has gone lower, I believe that this season, God is bringing each and every one of us to a deeper and a higher dimension than the way we are in Jesus' name. So the first biblical reference we have um, is, the, is what happened at the upper room, which was the first and the experience that the, um, the apostles, they had the disciples of Jesus. And as a result of that, we can see the impact that when they, were, when they received the anointing, when they received the power, they received the, the, the Holy Ghost, they moved from where they were and they spread out to different places, fulfilling the mandate and the great commission that Jesus has called them to do. So I believe that... Um, with the same anointing is here today and as many as those that hunger that are and thirst for it we will all receive it in Jesus name so another definition I have for myself like a personal just my own personal um, revelation is that an, a, a revival is an experience born through an encounter with a superior divinity and in this case it is God so there's no way we can make revival happen for ourselves we can't say oh I want to create revival but we can position ourselves to be recipients of revival. So, um, so the, the experience of the revival is the impartation of the Holy Spirit that transits our spirit man from the level where we are today to where God wants us to be. And I believe that the Holy Spirit is the fire, is the source, is the foundation, and is the passion of revival. Without him, we're nothing. Without the Holy Spirit, there's no revival. So he ignites revival. And as a result of the move of his spirit, it's also called the outpouring of his spirit. So like we read in Acts chapter 2, and with reference to Joel chapter 2, verse 27 to 28, that God said in the last days he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. So we believe that this is the last days, and God has promised that, and we are the fulfillment of that which he has said. And we believe that we will receive it in abundance, and we will overflow to the world out there in Jesus' name. So according to J. Mike Minix, he said, revival is a renewed radical commitment to Jesus Christ empowered by the Holy Spirit. So which means that for us to have a great work with Jesus, for us to have a great work with God, we need the help of the Holy Spirit because it is the Holy Spirit that empowers us to do that. We cannot do anything on our own. We cannot do anything by our own strength. But by the strength of the Holy Spirit, we can please the Father. So I always call the Holy Spirit the pacemaker. So in medical science, there's come something called make, uh, pacemaker. So pacemaker is a device that aligns the rhythm of the heart if it's incorrect. So in, with this, we all know the heart of the Father, which is the kingdom. There's no way we will fulfill the purpose and the mandate that God has called us to do without the Holy Spirit. So it is the Holy Spirit that aligns our, our life to the heart of the Father so we can fulfill uh, the purpose for which God has called us and we can walk in alignment with God. So um, I have two things, um, or two, I will say two reasons why we need revival. So the first one is empowerment. And empowerment means to receive authority and power to do something. So if you're not empowered, you are kind of uh, limited. So take for an instance, you want to go to, um, you want, you, like you want to be a chef or you want to be uh, a baker. If you don't have the knowledge of what it takes, whatever result you have is going to be a disaster. But in a situation whereby you've gone for training and you have your, you have your certificate, you're certified, you are so sure of what you're doing, so far you put everything in right proportion and you will be proud of the results you will present. So, and in this case, there's no way we'll be able to do what Jesus has called us to do, which is a great commission without the Holy Spirit. So we need the Holy Spirit to empower us to do all that God has called us to do. So uh, Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, But you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and all, unto the uttermost part of the earth. So um, the Bible did not say that we will receive power without the Holy Spirit. And so the source of the power is the Holy Spirit. So without the Holy Spirit, there's no power. So Holy Spirit, it's all about Holy, the Holy Spirit tonight. And I believe that uh, it is the Holy Spirit that gives the ability, the efficiency, and the might to please the Father and to do the work that he has called us to do. 
um, so the disciples, before they were empowered by the Holy Spirit, they were averagely working um, in a limited um, capacity or dimension because they were only in proximity with Jesus and they even wondered what happened, like what, what kind of man is Jesus because they, they were not in that dimension of what Jesus was experiencing and what he was doing. So they, in their heart, they were still thinking, what kind of man is this? What made him do this that we, we are unable to do? But it's because they were not empowered yet. And so it is important for us to be empowered before we go out there to do the Great Commission. If we go out there without being empowered by the Holy Spirit, we are not going to get the result and we are going to, um, we are going to regret our actions in that looking at the seven sons of Sceva, they said um, they, were, they were trying to rebuke the Spirit uh, through the name of Jesus that Paul proclaimed. And the, the, the evil spirit says, Paul, I know, Jesus, I know, but who are you? So in order for us to avoid that, I believe that the Holy Spirit is a necessity. We cannot do without him. For me personally, like for me, I, I kind of tell myself sometimes that I want to experience the fullness of the Holy Spirit much more than uh, anything. I want to experience it more than the clothes on my back. I want to experience it more than the blood that, that flows through my vein. Because um, when you hunger and you thirst for the things of the Spirit, you are not only... Are receiving it in like little proportion. You, you are expectant, you thirst, you hunger for it, you seek it with everything that you have. When it comes upon you, when it comes to you, it's in the deeper, in the higher dimension and you have to, you begin to overflow to others. Thank you for an instance, if you have a cup and um, the cup is, is, is empty, once you pour something in it, it takes a larger proportion of things compared to something that is almost full. So whatever we have in our lives, that is not of God, that is like maybe half full or half empty. We need to pour all those things out to allow the fullness of the Spirit, such that when we are full and we overflow, uh, the world around us will know that indeed we've had an experience with the Holy Spirit. I pray that this will be our testimony in Jesus' name. Uh, Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Uh, how God anointed Jesus Sorry, can I have it in Amplified Classic, please? Okay, thank you. How God anointed and consecrated Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with strength and ability and power. How he went about doing... Sorry, I think I need the next... Uh, the next one. I went about doing good, and in particular, curing all who were arrested, uh, uh, sorry, arrested and oppressed by the power of the devil, for God who was with him. So Jesus, in his lifetime, he experienced the direct impartation from God Himself. So, and God anointed Jesus. How God anointed Jesus? If Jesus, as a person, we call him the Son of God, we we call him the Word. Like with everything he has before, like before he left the world, if he had to go through that immersion, that consecration, that anointing, who are we as humans that we think that we can do or we can walk through this life without the Holy Spirit? So the Holy Spirit is very, very needful. And to, for us to, um, to understand the essence of revival, we need to know how much we need God and how much we need his spirit in our lives. So uh, without the Holy Spirit, evangelism or the great commission which Jesus gave that we should go into the world to, uh, to teach all nations, is just going to be a wishful thinking. Oh, I wish I can minister to this, I wish I can preach to this, because we don't have what it takes to do that. And if we do it by our own strength, um, it's not going to work. So um, the Holy Spirit gives the power to make it happen. We have the passion Maybe you have the passion to witness to people or you have the zeal, the motivation and you feel that uh, something is missing. I'm glad to tell you it's the Holy Spirit. For you to do the work of God, it's beyond passion, it's beyond resources, it's beyond um, the help that people around you will give. The Holy Spirit is the number one thing that you need to press. You need to press into that uh, deeper dimension of the Holy Spirit so that 
he can run you through like everything that you need to know. So Evangelist Ryan Bucky of Blessed Memory said, the Holy Spirit is the life in the preacher, the power in the sermon, and the divine magnet that attracts souls to the church. So without the Holy Spirit, the preacher is just a motivational speaker. Without the Holy Spirit, the sermon is just like every word out there. Maybe you read in the newspaper or something. And without the Holy Spirit, the church will struggle to keep itself together. But with the Holy Spirit, we can do all things. And even with the word, you can only preach for one minute and souls are touched. Because it is not coming from you. It is the Holy Spirit that is walking through the preacher. And he is, he is also giving you witness in your heart to, to experience what the preacher is also saying. So with that, when you connect both together, you have a synergistic effect that knowing that what the preacher is saying alone is not just... Um, it's not just the word you need to hear, but having a spirit, having a witness in your spirit that confirming what the preacher is saying, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. So uh, the second thing I would like to say is why we need revival is edification. So edification is instruction or improvement of a person morally, spiritually, or intellectually. So um, the, when we talk about edification, one of the, the, the gifts that God has given to us in the body of Christ is the gift of prophecy. When you, when you prophesy, when you dream dreams, when you see vision, God wants to edify you. He wants you to improve on some things. Take, an, take for an instance, looking at the life of uh, Joseph. When he, had the, when he was able to interpret the dreams that Pharaoh had, they were able to improve on what they needed to do to avoid famine. These are the things that the Holy Spirit can can help us to do. These are the things that revival will bring into our lives to avoid um, delay or to avoid disaster. So those are the two major things I like to say why we need revival, uh, empowerment and edification. So um, Joel chapter two, verse 28 to 29 says, and afterward I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. Even upon the men's servants and upon the maid servants in those days will I pour out my spirit. So God is not limiting um, the outpouring of your of your spirit. He's not looking at cultures, he's not looking at ethnicity, he's not looking at your he's not looking at the race, he's not looking at how good you are, he's not looking at whatever you have, might have achieved. As many as those that hunger, that thirst for it, he is willing and able to pour out his spirit. In a great proportion. I pray that this will be our testimony in Jesus name. So how to prepare for revival. So like I said, we cannot create revival, but we can position ourselves to be recipients of it. So the first one I would like to mention is recovery of the gospel. So understanding the salvation, the essence of salvation and the role that Jesus played on our behalf. That's the first thing because without Jesus, we are not even talking about the Holy Spirit. If you've not had an encounter with Jesus, you've not accepted Jesus as a Lord and Savior. There's no way you would be able to, um, to press into a dimension of the Holy Spirit. So we need to understand the essence of what Jesus has done for us. We need to understand what, what um, the role Jesus played in saving us. And that's the first step. So as many as those that are yet to give their life to Jesus, you have the opportunity today uh, to give your life to Jesus. And when you do, you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit and you begin to work an excellent work with God because that is what the Holy Spirit is more than able to do. All right, so the second one is to realize the need for revival. So if we don't realize that we need something, um, we might not, we, we, we don't push for it. We don't press into it because if I feel, if I don't think that I need a car, then I'm not going to make efforts to buy one. So if we, we need to realize that we need revival. And when we realize that we need revival, we must acknowledge the need for revival in our personal and corporate lives. So when I say corporate lives, I mean as a church, as a local, as local church, as a body of Christ, and in our societies and in our world. The killings, the kidnappings, violence, shooting, divorce, and other prob problems in our cities and our provinces, they are signals and indicators that this is the best time to experience revival. Because what revival does is it makes people better. It opens up our hearts to the dimension of the Holy Spirit and it brings joy to our cities. 
Uh, I remember when I was in Saskatoon, um, I was attending uh, a Redeemed Christian Church of God, and I started attending the church in January. And in April, the pastor said they were going to open another branch in the core of downtown. So like for people that live in downtown, you know that it's not the safest place to, to live in, in Canada. So I, I said, well, this is evangelism. This is what I'm passionate about. Let's go. So we started the church, and every Saturday we go for uh, evangelism. So we package like um, sandwiches and water because we know most of them are hungry. And there's no way you want to minister to them when they are still hungry. So you have to give them the real bread before you talk about the bread of life. So um, I, I could see people struggling a lot, people addicted to drugs. I could see the kind of life they were living. I remember there was... And what happened? He said, uh, there was this guy that came to me and said, he wanted to like uh, smoke. So he said, can I get a light? Am I, can I get a lighter right, rather? So my pastor said, sorry, I don't have a lighter, but I know the light of the world. So he asked him, he said, who was that? And he said, Jesus. And my pastor said, he just used the F word on Jesus. In my heart, I was just like, yeah, like there's so many things that needs to be changed in this nation. Not just in this nation, but all around us. We can't keep uh, we, we can't we can't keep staying silent and just allow things to go. So far it's not affecting me. I don't live in downtown. They're not coming to my house. I'm good. That is not what the Lord wants. Uh, there was a point in my life that I had to pray to God that, Father, this is my prayer. That whatever breaks your heart, let it break mine. Let it crush my heart. Because I actually wanted to see what God. How, like how God feels. I know there's no way I'll be able to feel because I can't see all the things that he sees from heaven. But just, I think I had just a glimpse of it. When you walk into hospitals, you see people that are oppressed. You see people that are sick. You see people that are suffering. And it's, it's not just okay to just say, well, it's not affecting me so far. It's like, it's not coming to my home. It's not affecting my kids and everything. It's high time we, we rise up and we take these territories for Jesus. It's our time we say this far but no further. It's our time we say this has to stop because the kingdom of our father has to be established in our lands, in our nations, in our, in our hearts, such that we'll overflow. If the devil is oppressing people, who says that we, the sons of God, cannot lift them up? The word of God in Acts chapter 10 verse 38 says, Our God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and with power, who went about healing those who were sick and oppressed. So the same anointing is upon us. He anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power. And this is the same thing that God has promised to pour out on all flesh, as many as those that are looking, that are trusting him and hunger for that. So it's also from a place of expectations that we expect that we want to receive the fullness of God because we know the impact is going to have in our lives and to overflow even to the world out there. So I pray that that revival fire will begin to burn in our bones right now in Jesus' name. Amen. So another thing is we need to realize the source of revival. So who is the source of revival? The Holy Spirit, simply put. So we cannot make revival happen through our zeal or passion or creativity. We need the one who can revive our hearts and our spirit. Because all these things come from the spirit. The spirit that is oppressing people, it's a spirit. It is not just one man like standing in the gates or something, doing something. But it is from the pits of, of hell. And we need to come against that. And how do we do that? We do that through prayer and through pressing deeper into the will of the God and even into that which the Holy Spirit wants to do. And I know that God will not come down from heaven to do like all these things. So he's definitely going to need us. So God is looking at, for available vessels but they are also prepared vessels. So if, God, if you're available, it's not okay to just say, I'm available. What if you're not prepared? So available, prepared, and useful vessels. And how do you become useful? That's where the refiner fire of the Holy Spirit comes in. It burns every sharp, everything that is not of God on, in, on your inside, from inside out. It brings about a transformation in your life such that those bitterness, those things you have struggled with, you are not overflowing those things to the people out there. So um, I believe that the need for the Holy Spirit, the, there's a deep urgency, like a deep urgent need for the Holy Spirit. And I pray that the Lord himself will cause us to experience the fire 
that will cause this land even to be taken for Jesus in Jesus' name. So uh, the next thing I have for how to prepare for revival is prayer. So individually in our homes, we need to pray for revival in our hearts and our spirit, man, and corporately as the body of Christ. So inviting God, um, looking at the story of Jesus in Cana of Galilee, right? He was invited. But one thing that the Holy Spirit made me to understand is Jesus was not just invited, he was also involved. So it's one thing for you to invite someone to say, oh, I have a, let's say I have a birthday party coming in, like coming on, I'm inviting you. It's another thing for the person to come to just sit down and just say, well, I'm invited. But it's another thing entirely for that person to come and be involved. So that means it's a, high, it's a level that is higher than just invitation. So Jesus was invited and he was involved. So when we pray to God, we are establishing um, his authority. And we are inviting him into that situation. So we need to pray as gatekeepers that the Lord has called us. That we stand in gap for as many as those uh, that have been oppressed by the devil. That the Lord will release them, he will set them free in Jesus' name. Um, in the last two to three weeks, we had like um, about 10 of us, we raised a, a prayer altar for this conference. And we're not just praying for just random things. We are praying kingdom advanced prayers, praying for everyone that will be sitting here today and those that will be connecting online. That we want to see the Pentecostal experience, that we want to experience the blessing of the Lord. And when we started a program today, in my heart, I was like, God, is this how you work? Because I could feel the presence, I could feel the glory, I could feel the, the, the power of the Holy Spirit in and around me. I was like, we, have not, we are not even halfway through, but yeah, your power is already here and it's, it's been made manifest. It's not in the numbers, it's not, in, the numbers is not, in this case, the number is not in the strength. Um, it is about what God can do. If it's just one person that is here tonight, I believe that God will still do the same thing he will do. So uh, prayer is very, very important. So for the, our nation and for our individual uh, person, we need to invite God into everything that we, we do. And while we do that, we tell him he's the source of the revival. We want him to take control of everything that he needs to do. And it will surely come through for us. Um, I'd like to read Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, pray, seek, crave, and require of necessity my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. This, is our, this has been our heart cry for the last three weeks. Praying to God that, God, we are here. You said if your people... And we are your people. We have prayed for this nation. We have prayed for everyone present here tonight and for everyone watching online that you will hear our voice and you will forgive our sin. You will heal our land and you will bring about revival. So I believe revival is here. I have a witness in my spirit, no doubt about that. And we will see it come into manifestation in Jesus' name. Amen. So um, the last thing I have here is realize the potential of revival. So the potential of revival is it brings unity to the body of Christ. So when revival comes, um, in Ch Acts chapter 2, the Bible did not say anything like, oh, this one was Pentecostal, this one was um, um, Anglican, this one was Catholic. The Bible said they all came together in one accord. So at the end of the day, um, they, they felt the impact of the Holy Spirit because they were in unity. Nothing could divide them at that point in time because they know that Jesus um, is the one that uh, unites us together. And they came together in one accord doing that and they actually experienced revival. So I believe that it is high time the local churches in our cities, in our provinces, in our nations will come together under the umbrella of Jesus is Lord. Nothing else divides us. And with that, we'll be able to conquer territories because I believe that uh, for the devil to be able to do all that he is doing right now is because there is unity in his kingdom. This is one of the things that we lack in the kingdom. And uh, if we are able to unite, come together, 
and stand against his devices and everything that he does, I believe that we will be able to conquer his territory for Jesus. I pray that the Lord will give us the strength and the power and the enablement that we need in Jesus' name. So what are the influences of revival? So the first one is nominal church members get converted. Who are the nominal church members? Those who profess Christian beliefs, subscribe to Christian ethics, it is well, God bless you. But deep down, they've not had that connection with the Holy Spirit. We see them everywhere. They are in every local church. But they, they need to come to the realization that they, they've not had the new birth experience. And that is the most important thing for them. So because these are the people that only come for the, for the hand of Jesus, not his heart. So if someone is coming for my hand because he needs to get something for me all the time, you are far away from me because I'm giving you something in my hand. But if you want to know more about me in my heart, I draw you closer. This is what the Lord wants to do for them. That the Lord wants them to press into his heart to know what his desires are. So that when they come closer, they are not only getting his heart, they are getting his arm, they are getting his love, they are getting his hand. And this is just a perfect picture of Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, that the Lord gave to me, that seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing shall be added unto you. So we're not just seeking his end, we are seeking his heart to fulfill his counsel. So, and the second thing that happens is sleepy Christians, they wake up to the immediate sense of God's love and presence. So sometimes we feel we are okay because everything is going on well with us. But the truth is, the world out there is sick. Without Jesus, the world out there is sick. So Jesus wants us to wake up and set ourselves loose for him to influence us and to walk through us. And how does he do that? Just like the apostles before Pentecost, Satan was afflicting the people in the world. And all what we need to do, like Papa will always say, is switch on. So it's high time we don't, like, we switch on the light because we are plugged to the source, which is the Holy Spirit. So if we remain calm and we say everything is fine, we are not doing anything, then we are not in a position to, uh, to complain about what is going on in our, in our world. So the Bible says in Acts chapter 8, that there was a, verse 8, that there was a great joy in the city. This is what uh, God expects us to have in our cities because when the Holy Spirit comes, we experience revival. We are not just um, limiting it to ourselves. We are overflowing to the world out there. Maybe you are in school, you are in church, you are in um, your, your office, or anywhere that you are, you are overflowing to others. Like that, you, you transfer it to other people, and at the end of the day, you see that, you see a radical change in our province, in our cities, in our nation. This is what we desire, and we believe that the Lord will cause us to press into a deeper dimension of him, more than where we are today, in Jesus' name. And the last one for uh, the influence of revival is unbelievers in our communities are attracted to the church or the Christian community in remarkable numbers. So we see the large proportion of people coming to be edified in church because they have seen the light which we have and people want to know where do you fellowship? Where do you like wh who are the people you work with? Because I can see that you are the difference in the world. So that is what God wants us to do. And as a result of that, both the nominal Christians who are now um, experiencing the new birth in Jesus and the sleepy Christians that have woken up to the reality of the deep sense of God's love, they come together to form a synergistic effect that creates a result, a tangible result in a society by bringing even the unbelievers into the fold. This is what the Lord desires and I believe that it is more than what, um, it is more than what our heart desires. If we press into it and the Lord will fulfill it in Jesus' name. So the outcomes of revival evangelism, we are winning souls to Christ. What are we doing in our cities? What are we doing in our communities for Jesus? Repentance. We have the moral lesson of individual lives and society. We have worship, magnifying God. Uh, we have encounter, which is experiencing God's indwelling. And we have liberation, freedom from personal and corporate sins. Reconciliation, there's, there's removal of barriers of racial and ethnic, uh, ethnic group. So we're not saying this is for, um, this is black, this is white, this is purple, this is pink. Everyone comes together under the umbrella of Jesus is Lord and prayer, which is also intercession. And there's great joy in our city. So our expectations for today is that we would have revelation. Jesus become more revealed to us than anything. And we will have illumination that the Lord himself will flood our lives with the light and that we will be transformed.
um, and that we would have an encounter with him. So, um, so the Lord actually told me to get a, uh, a map of Canada. I have it here. And um, in my heart, I was just like, yeah, this is the map of Canada. But I see, I see territories. I see, I see, I see a nation that is crying for help. I see a nation that is hunger for the things of the spirits. I see a nation that is hunger for revival. I see a nation that needs to experience the true freedom, which is in Christ Jesus. Although from the outside world, we might be looking at it like everything is fine economically and things like that. But it's beyond the economic things. It's beyond what we see. Every territory has a spirit. And if we don't enforce the spirit of Jesus, there's no way that the devil will not keep oppressing his people. So just the last illustration I have. So imagine the, the, the fire of the Holy Spirit is a liquid fire. So when you go to the swimming pool, you don't wear your regular clothes. You wear like your swimsuit. So when you get into the water, there's no way you will not get wet. So let's say the, the fire of the Holy Spirit is a, li like, is a liquid fire. And whatever you get into, you take up its nature. So if you're able to press into the liquid fire of the Holy Spirit, you come out. Imagine you taking bus, going to everywhere, like, every, like doing your regular business days. And that a drop of the fire is just getting everywhere. That is what makes the difference. You can't go to the sick kids and tell them, oh, I want, maybe I want to pray for someone. I want to like, like pray for everyone here. And they will tell you, well, it's possible for them to tell you, no, sorry, we don't allow things like that. But let's say someone just come out and say, um, can you just pray for me? And instantly you're able to pray for that person. And that person got healed. Maybe the person has cancer or something. That person got healed. I believe before you leave there, they will tell you, yeah, can you pray for everyone? Because they've seen results. So one of the things that makes people not to take us seriously is because our lives are not, provided, are not producing results. Once our lives are producing the right results, when people begin to see our lives and say, I want to pass on my life after this person. I want to, uh, be, I, so, so this person has something that I would like to press into. Show me your God. Show me how you do things. When people see these results, they can't deny it. My husband used to say that you cannot deny excellence. So when people see results, which comes as a result of what the Holy Spirit can do, they cannot deny it. You can't tell them that Jesus is Lord after they might have seen the results. That is what gave the, the, the apostles the opportunity to preach Jesus everywhere they went to. Because as they were preaching, Jesus was backing it up with signs and wonders. Because that is what those people actually need. So uh, I believe that more than COVID-19, we know what happened during COVID. The Holy Spirit is contagious. And more than the summer fire, for those that live in the prairie land, you know what I'm talking about. It takes like months sometimes to put it out. And just last week, I think I heard about France saying that they have this wildfire and they are expecting winter. I was like, this is August. You're expecting winter. It's that bad. So the Holy Spirit, the fire of the Holy Spirit is something that can spark in someone's life and it can go wild beyond our imaginations. So I just pray today that we want to leave the banner of Jesus' name high more than anything. Everywhere we go to, we see the pride flag everywhere. These people are not ashamed to proclaim what they do. They are not afraid to say this. Is what they believe in. But we Christians, I believe we are the most shy people on earth because we feel, I don't want to say this. If I say that, they might be looking at me like this one is like too righteous. But that is not what God wants to do. God wants us to actually come to the place whereby we keep shining for him. And I pray that as many as those that are hungry and thirsty for impartation tonight, impartation is here, there is grace here, there is power here. As we press deeply into that dimension, we will receive it, and our lives will not remain the same. In Jesus' name. Shall we bow down our heads to pray? Our most gracious God, we thank you. Thank you for all your word that has come, Lord, to challenge us tonight. Because we know that we are not there yet, but you are taking us from dimension to dimension. We decree and declare, Lord, 
that even as we press further into you, that we will experience the fullness of your grace, that our lives will never remain the same, that you will move us from a deeper dimension, from the ankle dimension, Lord God, from the from the knee dimension, from the waist dimension, that we will press deeply, we'll be soaked, Lord, even in your grace, in your power, in your spirit, that everywhere we go to, we'll begin to drip your glory, we'll begin to drip your fire, that we will make good impact, we'll be influential, even everywhere we go, that when people see the results that we make, the results that we produce as a result of the empowerment and the endowment of your spirit in our lives, that they will come to us, that they want to follow our God and they will come to the knowledge of Christ. This is what we desire tonight and we decree and declare Lord God as many as those that hunger for impartition that there will be transference of grace tonight and Lord you will cause everything to work together for our good and in our favor to the glory and honor of your name in Jesus name. In Jesus mighty and wonderful name we have prayed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, so we'll be going to the next uh, prophetic declaration. Uh, we have Reverend Ken in the house. He'll be leading us um, to pray over Alberta and British Columbia. Thank you, sir. Uh, hallelujah. Let's rise up to our feet and make declarations over at better. And uh, particularly, I stand in my office to say marriages will not fail because we are on the watch. And our proclamation will close the gate to all the evil spirits that destroy marriages because their purport is that they want to harvest the children. They will not have the children of our generation in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hand if you please. Our Heavenly Father, we stand in your name. We stand on the authority of your word. And we know there's no distance in the spirit. Right from this place, oh God, we stretch out our hearts and our faith over Alberta. And we decree and we declare that by the power of the Holy Spirit, the death of Jesus Christ, whereby he descended before he ascended, by that victory, we overthrow every national altar of witchcraft operating in that province. In the mighty name of Jesus, every evil altar that has been established, even through the evil worship, by the first nations thousands of years ago in their commitment to witchcraft as a religion but the blood of the lamb will lift up the curses but the blood of the lamb will break the spells but the blood of the lamb will speak to the ancient gates and will decree over you lift up your heads O ye gates and Peter lifted up ye everlasting doors let the king of glory come in let the spirit of revival come in let the spirit of Christ take over concerning the lives of our homes, concerning the lives of our relationships, concerning the lives of our marriages, concerning the lives of our children. We break your grip by the blood of the Lamb in the name of Jesus, whomsoever the Son sets free is free indeed. And we stand in his name and in his stead because he's the same yesterday and today by us. We declare and we declare that Alberta is set free from the grip of witchcraft in the name of Jesus. Alberta is set free from the grip of divorce in the name of Jesus. British Columbia be free in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. in this prophetic declaration I have um, Pastor Solomon here to lead us to pray over Newfoundland and uh, Nova Scotia Hallelujah Praise the Lord Hallelujah I want to read a scripture quickly before we pray in the book of Zechariah chapter 1 from verse 28 he said sorry 1 verse 18 Zechariah 1 verse 18 says then lifted I my then lifted I up my eyes and saw and behold four horns and I said unto the angel that talked with me what be these and he answered me 
These are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. In this case, these are the horns who have scattered the provinces, the cities, and the local government. Praise the Lord. Not just scattering because of the one just scatter for economic reasons, but spiritually. Amen. For the gospel's sake. Amen. Then said hi, what come this to do? And he spake, saying, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, yes, so that no man will lift up his head. Praise the Lord. So that no church will lift up their head. So that no spiritual or Christian body in this land will lift up their head. Praise the Lord. But who are these? Say, but these are come to fray them. Praise the Lord. And who are these? We are these. We've come to what? Fray them. To subjugate them. Amen. To cast out the horns of the Gentiles. Praise the Lord. Now, what are these horns? In our own context now, we're talking about. The horns are, praise the Lord. They are the systems, the structures, the decrees, the laws, and everything that you know, governmental, whatever it is that currently they are in power right now, praise the Lord. Judiciary, whatever they are, praise the Lord. They've, these are the horns, the horns all over the place that the gospel, my brother talked about it recently, praise the Lord. It's okay when you are anywhere to talk about anything, you know what I'm saying, everything evil. But when you start talking about the gospel, what happened? They start raising up their, praise the Lord. So we're talking about those horns, Amen. And that's what we are here to pray today. Quickly, statistics says that two-thirds of children came to faith by the age of 18. For the three percent came to know Christ before they were age 12. And one half of only one half of believers were converted after age 21. So you can also see the reason why some group of people we have in this country is going after the children. Have you heard about the drug? Have you heard about those things that they are reading in the library? Are you, you understand what I'm saying? I'm just wanting to decode it yourself. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But you see, that, that, they are going after the children. Because that's, and that's what we should be doing also. Going after what? The children. Praise the Lord. Because if we catch them young, they are caught for eternity. Praise the Lord. So we are going to pray. Amen. Right now. Are you stayed up already? Are you stayed up already? We are the, we are these. We are the blacksmiths that have come to uproot those horns. Do you understand? So we are here to pray to uproot those horns wherever they are planted in the four cardinal points of Canada. Amen. Manitoba, New Brunswick, wherever it is, they've planted those horns. We want to uproot those horns, those horns that will not allow the gospel, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to let us hold somebody. Let me say only two of us agree concerning it. Hold somebody by your side. Let's agree together. Come on, somebody. let's agree. Hold somebody and begin to pray in the spirit. Uh, because not by power but not by might, but by my spirit, say the Lord. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. For we walk not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers. Be stirred up in your spirit. Come on with holy vengeance. This far, but no further. You will not steal our children. You will not you will not cut for the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel will flourish in this land. Righteousness will cover this land as water covered the sea. Lord, lift up your voice. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Decree in the name of Jesus. We speak to that strong man. Lose your grip over those provinces. Lose your hold over those systems. Lose your hold over those structures. In the name of Jesus, we dethrone every strong man in the physical, in the spiritual. We dethrone them that the system that the system will be compliant with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. La Magunda Kenderia, he can do about Santa, the secret of Bacosia. We speak to the heavens, and we come on the heavens, we war against all those. He has stood against the gospel. 
we speak to the earth. Ye who earth calabosia. Ye o earth. O earth, ye the word of the Lord. Ye the bobosia. Lembo kosi kaleboya. Everyone has gathered themselves together against Christ and his household in this land. Let the earth war against them. Let the earth war against them. Rakababosi, le kabolia. We speak to the heavens. Le makondolia, rakabaya bosi, le kabaya. We cast them down from the higher lofty places in the name of Jesus. In the power, in spiritual power, in economic power, in political power, we cast them down. Every single one of them that have gathered together. Lend them to stop the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ from flourishing the land, from righteousness, from flourishing the land. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you praise, Lord. Canada shall be saved. Amen. The provinces shall be saved. Amen. New Brunswick shall be saved. Manitoba shall be saved. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Please, you may have your seat. Yes, uh, thank you so much, Abigail, for that uh, charge. Thank you to Reverend Ken and Pastor Solomon for those uh, prophetic prayers. Now, turn to your neighbor and say, we're about to switch it up. We didn't turn to our neighbor's house. I'm looking at you. Bro. We're about to switch it up. Yes. So, uh, at this point, I know we've been sitting down for a while. We've been in, inside for a while. So, we want to give us three to five minutes to stretch your legs. Um, go out there. We have um, a, a cocktail out there. Um, you can have a drink. You can have some food out there. Um, just three to five minutes. And then we'll, you, you can use the washroom and then we'll come back here. Um, the instrumentalists, please remain here and just be giving us those nice melodious tunes. You know, remember, Q sharp. Good. Uh, so please, let's all go out and um, meet people, someone you've never met before, uh, socialize. And in five minutes' time, I'll be back here so that we'll take it a notch up. Um, so that's it. Enjoy and uh, have fun. God bless you all. We're still sitting. <laughs>
Hello, everyone. All right, please come back in. Please come back in, everyone. Everyone, please come in. It's time for us to take it a notch higher. Those of us volunteering as ushers, can we please let everyone know it's time to come back in? Please come back in, everyone. It's time. Meet anyone? No? Yes? Okay. You met someone there? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, once again, thank you everyone for coming up, uh, coming out to this, to the Light Up Conference 2022, an initiative by the Masters Fit Network. I remain your host, Ife. That is my name. Now, there's someone that I'm, I'm about to bring up. I have heard about him. In fact, the, the record label he signed to, the person who runs that record label is my friend. And this person also ministered at the first. Okay, okay. Okay, sorry. Like I said earlier, I'm about to switch it up, right? So. Something was just switched. Now, <laughs> something was just yeah. We have to make do with every. We can never be caught on our ways. Um, so some, the husband of Abigail Akintola is about to make a presentation right now. So Ezekiel, are we ready? Okay. Please encourage him as he walks down here. Praise the Lord. Ah, we are not happy. Praise the Lord. It's time for revival. We need to be happy. Praise the Lord. All right. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming. We really appreciate you all. Uh, we're about to switch it to another gear, like he said. And that's why I want to quickly do this and then so that we can just get into the mood and then just let God do what he wants to do. Um, as you all know, uh, my name is Ezekiel Akintola. And I'm also... I'm privileged to be the founder and um, CEO of VATV. Uh, <laughs> thank you to the glory of God. And um, in VATV, we have a mandate from God to um, inspire lives and enrich souls. And the part of also one of our mandates is also to um, bring honor back into um, 
Christianity and then the Christian um, folks, we discovered that these days, uh, especially on social media, people are quick now to just dishonor men of God, to just say things online based on their own feel, and they just do whatever they need to do. And um, we believe that that is not good. And um, one of the things we, we do anytime we, we see grace, we always re honor the grace and um, we, we recognize the gift of God, especially when it's a blessing to, to nations. And um, we want to show the world how it's been done. Uh, and um, that has been our practice. We've had the privilege to honor great men of God who have blessed our lives, who have blessed humanity, who have blessed Christianity and um, people all over the world. And um, today it will be another honor to just um, just show our own little way of um, recognizing the grace of God upon our daddy. He has been a huge, huge blessing to the body of Christ all over the world, especially the young adults, which is his, um, one of his constituent and he has, you need to see lives that are, I am a product of that also. And um, as YTV, we, we want to really honor you, sir, and um, just appreciate the grace of God over your life. We know we cannot say it enough and um, we cannot express it enough, but we just want to use this as a little way to appreciate you um, for allowing God to use you the way he's been using you all over the world. And we represent that little fraction of believers all over the world that really appreciate your grace. And uh, we, we want to show you that we honor you so much. And um, on behalf of myself and my wife, the founder and um, co-founder of YTV, we want to show our appreciation to you. Uh, this is an award of recognition presented to Pastor Piki Olawale. Thank you for your immense contribution to the body of Christ all over the world. We love and celebrate you from YTV, Canada, and um, all over the world. We want to recognize you, sir. God bless you, sir. my pastor to to join me and uh, he has always been there with us also as yet to to present this to all of Thank you so much, sir. We really appreciate you, sir. Can we put your hands together for the, the grace of God upon his life? All right. Thank you so much, Ezekiel. Um, giving honor to whom honor is due. That is wisdom right there. Um, back to what I was saying also. So, we're about to bring someone up the stage for administration. Now, this is someone that I have I've not met him personally, but I've met, like, I know the record label uh, he signed on to, and the person who is in charge of that record label is, happens to be someone I converse with a lot. And that person was also here for the first Light Up conference we had in 2019 or 2018. 18, yeah. Uh, Daniel Ojo. So I've gone through this person's bio, and one thing I know is that he has a passion for worship. He's a passionate worshiper. I've seen his videos. I have read about him. I was listening to Deeper and Holy. And these are really songs that have touched my life. So, I'm going to read a little bio about him. His name is Michael Manhertz. Did I pronounce it correctly? Okay. <laughs> now, Michael Manhertz is a vibrant and passionate gospel art artist from Toronto, Canada. He is a singer songwriter, background vocalist, arranger, and a vocal coach. He has released various songs such as Take It All and Holy. People of God, please let's make welcome Minister 
Michael Manhurt. Please keep clapping till he comes to the stage. God alone, Father, who can take your place, deserves the highest praise. Come on, think about it. Oh, you alone, we give our crowns to you. We lay every crown down and we say you reign. Oh, as God alone, Father, who can take your place, deserves the highest praise. Oh God, sing you alone, and we give, we give our crowns to you. Come on, and we say you reign. We say you reign. Yeah, as God. Father, who can take your place, deserves the highest praise. Oh God, we sing you alone. Oh, we give our crowns to you. Oh Jesus, we sing you. our crowns to you. We say you reign, we say you reign, has God alone. Father, who can take your place, deserves the highest praise. Come on, lift your voice, sing you, to you are. We give, we give our crowns to you. And what do we do as a response? We say, you reign, O oh, Heavenly Father, oh, as God. We'll sing it one more time. Father, Father, who can take your place? Deserves, deserves the highest praise. We sing you alone, you are. We give our crowns, we give our crowns to you. God alone. Come on, it's only God alone that reigns. Come on, we learned about revival. Come on, there's a revival that's stirring up in this place. Come on, we thank you, Jesus, for all that you're doing. You're setting and positioning us to be ready to receive and be recipients of this revival. So we open our mouths, we open up and offer you the fruit of our lips, Jesus, because you and you alone are the one who sits on the throne. Father, who can take your place? Who can take your place? The matchless King of glory. There is nobody like him. And I dare if you think there's somebody like him, we take a step back to honor the King of kings and the Lord of lords. If you know the name above all names, somebody shout that name. Oh, come on, it's 
just too quiet here. If you know the way maker, the Prince of Peace, shout the name of, shout the name of, shout the name of, hallelujah, send revival God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 I'm sorry, I'm just having a moment thinking back. Who can take your place? Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold must be broken. Because you wear the victor's crown, Jesus. You will overcome. You have overcome the world. So if the Bible says, greater is he that lives in me than he that is in the world, whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? Oh my good Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Come on, in this moment, just take a moment to honor him. I know everybody's waiting for a song. But I love this lyric in a song. It says, I'll bring you more than a song. For a song in itself is not what you require. You search much deeper within. Come on, to reach out to him. Reach out to him. This is positioning yourself for revival. Cry out to him. Cry out to him. We want to see revival. Come on, if you can speak in the heavenly language, I, I, I encourage you to in this moment. Yakanda Masera Bosha. Idiota Masanda Mate. Yakansanda Mahilko Toromoyanda. Brianda Maketero Bosanda. Yanda Makotoro Bosanda. We are ready in position for your latter rain. Yakrianda Makotoro Boyanda. Hey, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we cry out to you, Yahweh. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Send revival. I hear you, Lord. Oh, send revival. Come on, sing the song of your heart. Oh, we'll sing. Send revival. Come on, if you've got the open up your mouth and say, sing, stand revival. Hope oh, on him, lift your voice and sing it out. Sing, stand revival. Pour out your spirit on no man. Lift it up and say, stand, stand revival. Revival. Oh Lord, are we positioned and ready for revival? There was a sound of the hungry, a sound of those already. Is there a sound in this place today of those who are ready to receive and in position for the revival? Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're going to declare <laughs> that we want to see revival. Come on, if you've got that, somebody scream and say, We want to see revival. Come on, clap those hands and face like this.
floodgates pour out your spirit open up the windows open up the floodgates and what are we pouring out your spirit open open up the open up the floodgates pour out your spirit say oh open up the somebody that is crying out for revival privately and I hear the Lord saying to me in this moment <laughs> you got to position yourself in the right in the right place so it requires a shift as we sang before atmosphere shift <laughs> your perspective has to change you can't be you can't have revival looking back You cannot have revival looking back. God calls us to move forward. So if you're trying to be revived moving back, that's the opposite of revival. Revival will carry us forward. 
so I came to declare to whomever is in this place that might be looking backwards that God is calling you for an atmosphere shift to turn your perspective forward so that may be you today just say Lord I want my perspective to change now come on just declare it over yourself you don't gotta scream it out but just an internal change in your heart Lord my perspective I need it to change now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we need to change now subject to give him worship. Thank you, Jesus. This is our purpose. This is our function to worship him. We are created to worship him. Come on, who was created to worship him? Are you created to worship him? That means when we're in his presence, we offer up a sound of praise, the fruit of our lips. Hallelujah. The spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come move over us. Yeah, come rest on us. Yeah, come rest on us. As the spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come move over us. Oh, come rest on us. Yeah, come rest on. Spirit was set. The spirit was moving. When you're in the room, 
Your presence, Lord. Your, your presence, Lord. Lord. Come on, with your voice. Sing, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come on, sing to me. Your come flood this place and fill the air. Hey. Sing your glory. Your Revival. Let us become, yes, more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your, everybody say, let us become, sing more aware of your
in Jesus name thank you so much minister Michael Manhart that was a powerful session thank you for being a blessing to us to God alone be all the glory we pray that of the increase of your anointing there will be no hand in Jesus name now this is the time we've all been waiting for <laughs> I've, I've anticipated this time for months but now is the time this is the set time uh, after my brief introduction, there will be a video introduction that will come up. Please, you may have your seat, please. It's indeed an honor and a privilege that I do not take for granted to have, um, most people call him Pastor PK, but I call him Papa. Because I see a father figure in him. And I remember when God uh, told me, like gave me the topic for this, and God told me he's the one to, to minister. I was saying I was going to say it's like, tell him, give him a call, tell him later. But there was, I was just doing dishes in the kitchen, and God said, do it now. So immediately I sent him a text. And I think within a couple of hours, he sent back, he said, call me. When I called him and I told him, this is what God lays in my heart. And the next thing he said is, whatever God is supporting you to do, I will be there. And he did not just say that. He said, let me know the time and the date that works for you. Um, he runs a very busy schedule. But it's an honor to have him in this house today. He has traveled to nations. And... I know the impact and the influence that God has placed upon his life. I do not take it for granted. For us to have him here tonight, um, it's a great privilege, and I do not take it for granted. Thank you so much, Papa, for honoring God in our lives. Thank you so much. We honor and we celebrate you. Um, Media, are you ready? Our special guest, Pastor P.K. Olawale. Pastor P.K. Olawale. Pastor our special guest, Pastor P.K. Olawale. Pastor P.K. Olawale is an apostle, prophet, and teacher. He is an avid soul winner who seeks to awaken in saints a desire to rule and have dominion in their territories on behalf of the kingdom. He started pulpit ministry in 1986 and has pastored nine different churches in Africa, Europe, and the USA. Pastor PK is a revivalist and Bible expositor whose ministry is characterized by signs, wonders, healings, peculiar manifestations, and demonstrations of the Holy Spirit. Married to Pastor Bola, they are blessed with five children. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to Light Up Conference 2022 Pastor P.K. Olawale. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, it works. Can we just uh, lift up our hands and just bless Jesus for a minute? My Jesus, my Savior, 
for a minute just we're entering the flow now just set yourself up and just pray in the Holy Ghost briefly pray in the Holy Ghost briefly pray tambre suvreti egre nombre te Tatora de Gojenon Palahate Moniande. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Blessed be your name, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Father. We stand before you great honor folks you've given access Not only access you've given an inheritance to you Lord we are your people and the sheep of your pasture Lord, we ask that you take a hold of us today you give us a life to live for you Lord, I pray we stop living for ourselves. Lord, I ask for a breaking forth. Fountains of the depths of grace in destinies to burst forth. Let all praise be yours forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Someone say loud, amen. amen. Please, could you give me a bit of volume? I'm, I'm a bit, I'm screeching out. Is it? I can't hear myself or something. I don't know. Please, you may be seated in the Holy Presence. God bless you. Father to child, spirit to spirit, lighted by your word. With the bread of life, that's how I come alive. That's how I change my world. Father to child, one more time. Father to child, spirit to spirit. Lighted by your word. With the bread of life, with your bread of life. That's how I come alive. That's how I change. Lord, need your name upon me, bring. 
Come breathe your pain upon me, breathe. Your hey, your hey, That's our prayer, oh God. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Just breathe your name. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Lord, breathe your name. Just breathe your name upon, upon me, me, breathe. Your name, your name, it's your name. Breathe, Lord. Just, Just breathe, breathe your name. name. Amen. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Second Kings in chapter number four. Second Kings four. One to thank the Lord for his days. Thank the Lord. It is a uh, it's a beautiful day. It really reminds me of um, Satan quite some years back. Um, I received a burden to go back home in Nigeria then for that time period. We went there to hold some crusades. And I kept trusting the Lord that God would just give me two young folks um, that would tear that place out. Um, first day, second day, and third day was the last day, which was the Sunday service we were closing out. Two young men came in from the club. They were dead drunk. Dead drunk. And folks, a lot of folks have been there hearing, seeing what God had been doing and hearing God's word, but none opened really their heart to accept what God wanted to do. And I'll explain myself very soon. And so these guys came, they were so drunk, <laughs> there were four of them, and uh, the usher was trying to deter them from coming forward. So I told her, oh, no, 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 give them the front seat. In fact, one of them sat on the seat I sat on. Yeah, because we didn't have space. It was, it, was, it was filled out. So I said, no, no, give them front seat. They were oozing, like those guys were dead drunk. And I began to preach. They slept off because they were drunk. Well, guess what? Suddenly, at some point, they all woke up at the same time. But I noticed that suddenly they... They were looking as though they were in their right senses now, suddenly. And I kept talking about Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit and what God wants to do with the life of every person he had created and made. Before I could make the altar call, these guys stepped forward to give their heart to Jesus. It was very strange because suddenly the alcohol was gone. And they were in their right senses, and the guys that were drunk, dead drunk, coming into service within 40 minutes, started crying. Give their heart to Jesus. Before I could pray for them, they got baptized in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost took hold of these three guys, of the four. God used those three guys to tear that island out, inside out. They began to preach Jesus the little they knew. The pastors could not handle them. As far as they were concerned, every pastor in the island was too cold for Jesus. Oh, yeah. And that's the truth. You know, it's what, it's what you call status quo. You know, we just maintaining where we are and yet not seeing territories beyond where we are. And they began to preach. Anytime there is a festival, you know, those islands, they have all those carnivals and festivals and Usually, it was a time for fornication. A lot of filthiness. These guys changed it. Police will arrest them, send them to jail. The moment they release them, they return back to where they were before preaching. Because there were some areas that were forbidding. I mean, you, cannot, you are not allowed to preach there. So they got tired of arresting them. Then they had to give them negotiate. All right, so, you know, we allow you to so and so time. You can't preach from so and so time, don't preach there. You know, it became so, God used them so much, so much, that the
that suddenly there was a transformation. It's like Saul suddenly getting born again. We knew his exploits. We knew who he used to be, but suddenly something has changed. And God sent them back to the same place. It got so important, um, they became very, very significant in the nation. That any time they had to make policies about youths, they would invite them in. One of them today is the national pastor of a particular denomination there. What am I saying? You, you might be looking insignificant to you. Oh, no. It was a big thing like this that turned my own life around. First Square Gospel Church, Alago, Meiji, 1985. Fire Conference, Brother Francis Waloke was still a brother then. And I attended then. I, 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 was, I, was, I was still in school. And uh, I went first day, second day. The third day, I didn't have the bus fare to, to transport myself from where I lived, which was about, let's say about 20 miles away. Maybe not up to that, maybe, cause, I mean, traffic would not allow you to know the distance, right distance, because you look at the time you spend in traffic, really. Let's say about 12 miles away or thereabout. Or could be slightly more, I'm not sure. But that day, and I didn't have, I couldn't get myself to church. I looked for someone to buy my watch and give me some money. No one wanted it. I was going to do anything and everything to get to that meeting. So what I did was I decided, well, if I can raise the money, I would set out very early in the morning, early enough for me to get to the, to the, to the church. So I set out in the morning, and brethren, that, the devil didn't make it easy that day. It rained, not cat and dog, these are booze, booze and buffaloes. It was, it was serious, and this was Lagos, Nigeria. And brethren, I got there, meeting had started. I was drenched, soaked, hungry. I'd walked almost 15 miles to get there. And I stood there, and the man of God had started. And I was about entering church, but because I was soaked and wet and a bit messy, the usher was trying to deter me from entering the church. I only needed to give up. hungry. The devil did everything for you not to come today. But God says today your spiritual heavens open and I will show you where I'm taking you. Something carried me from that door. Threw me back outside. Those of you that are familiar with that particular church, those days we used to have, uh, they used to, I know I can't describe all that to you. And that was, that was where I had my service in the rain outside. A few people, I heard a few people that tried touching me, picking me up, also joined me on the floor. And most of the nations I've been to, some of the things God will have me do, I saw that night. And God now gave me something to live for. And when he gives you something to live for, it narrows your life. Not everyone can be your friend. Not every place is for you. Not everything is for you. It just gives you become very, very, very narrow. Tonight, I, I just asked the Lord, Lord, I just need two folks. That's all Jesus needs. Someone to not just become pregnant with fire. It's something that can be explained is rather better experienced. Second Kings in chapter number four and verse number one. We want to thank the instrument. These guys can play. Pastor, these guys can play. Seriously, I, these guys can play. Yeah, I play all the instruments. And I know when I see my seniors. <laughs> Man, these guys are boy. But you see, you listen to them every week, so you don't know, you don't know how, how, how good they are. They are they are excellent. They're just fabulous. God will anoint you more in Jesus' name. Amen. And don't collect money for playing for God though. Hmm? You will lose you no, I'm sure. Oh these things are very simple. Now, once, once, who, who, I mean, whom would you rather pay you, God or man? Man's resources are very limited. The Bible says a people shall serve the Lord, it shall be taken for a generation. Huh? God's anger is transgenerational. God's thank you is also transgenerational. 
You can do one thing for God that your children's children who don't necessarily have to serve the Lord will find life easy because of what you did. That's what the Western world is still enjoying. And God does not require that child to serve him. So he told the children of Israel, I'm not doing this because of you, but because of my covenant with David, period. So brethren, please... No, seriously, I, I, I did this all my youth and where Jesus, when Jesus pays, you won't be able to sleep. That all I, that's all I can tell you. When Jesus pays, you won't be able to sleep. Your children will enjoy it. It's called a fountain. It's a fountain. If his anger transcends four generations, his blessings will transcend at least four generations. So there is a walk you can walk, a serve you can serve. There is a do you can do in God and in God's kingdom. That when the Bible says a righteous man lays up um, treasures for his children's children, it's not so much about your, it's about what you gave. Your time, your life. Second Kings in chapter number four. Finally. I'll read from verse number one to verse number Glory be to God. To verse number seven. Someone's life is about to change drastically. In the heart. Let our king believe that Oh, uh, 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 oh, I say, oh, 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 Jesus, be lifted oh, in our lives tonight. oh, my King, oh, 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 be lifted high in our hearts tonight. Let every thought and every high thing have exalted themselves in our lives. Above your knowledge be subjected and subjugated in the presence of the King. Oh, oh, Every fortress that has been a hindrance to accessing God, every fortress, Lord, every wall that has been strong enough to withstand the knowledge of God, the hunger and the desire for Jesus, Lord, we break them down right now in the name of Jesus. Ah, yeah. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet. Said unto Elijah. Saying thy servant my husband is dead. And thou know, can you give me a new King James Version? If you have it. The newest, thou is, newest, thank you. God bless you. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet cried to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. Verse number two. And so Elisha said unto her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, your handmaid, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. So also a jar of oil. Then he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere. From all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons 
then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. And so she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons and who brought the vessels to her and poured and she poured it out. Verse 6 says, And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Verse 7. The last verse. Then she came and told the man of God and he said, Go sell the oil and pay your debts and you and your son leave on the rest. I trust in the Lord that tonight God will move us forward in the realm of the spirit. It would, it would ignite us afresh in the name of Jesus. There are four things I want to say as general statement before I set us on the road here. Um, number one is the fact that the Bible says this woman came to a man of God and said, well, my, my, my husband, which is one of your, uh, your protégés, uh, had died. And creditors are coming to pick up my son because the truth is this, once a generation owes something, the generation after has to pay if that generation can't pay. All right? Now, there's a reason that works because God says in the book of Genesis that every tree created that has fruit that is to progenitate, to, to, to reproduce rather, can only reproduce after its kind. And so, anything that had been done that is wrong. If that generation can't pay, and I can tell you no generation can pay. If that generation can't pay for the sin, if that generation, if Adam cannot fix the error that he brought all of us into, it has to go on to another generation. Now, brethren, it's, it's possible from this scripture, brethren, please stay with me. I'll be very brief. It's very possible for, this, for us to see that what became the um, point of deliverance or what God used to deliver this second generation that will have gone into slavery like if their fathers were in slavery and bondage to death was two things were two things number one was oil two vessel that's all the oil and the vessel made a difference between slavery in a generation and liberty in another one now, the problem wasn't the, the fact that there was no vessel during that first generation. There was vessel and there was oil. That very first generation, the prophet, oh no, the Bible says, what woman, what do you have? He said, I have nothing. Save a jar of oil. Okay, you have a jar of oil, but you don't have vessels. Okay, don't, you know what? The oil is not useful without vessels. And the vessels are meant to carry oil. So you need oil, you have oil, go get vessels. Please stay with me. It's important for us to understand that what God will use or what God wants to do with you is already in you. He's not trying to create it. God has already deposited everything. Second Peter 1, 3, according as his divine power has given unto us all that pertains to life and godliness. Everything we need, everything you can be is inside of you. But the Bible says that this generation, because of the oil and the vessel, God birthed liberty for them. So the oil and the vessel makes a difference between when there is bondage and when there is liberty. Stay with me. Second thing I need us to note from this scripture is the fact that the man of God said to her, what do you have? And he said, I have nothing save a pot of oil. See, one of the reasons why we can't birth deliverance in the nation, birth deliverance in the city, be an agent of change as God will have us be, be light in a dark world, is because, brethren, our home is still full of many other things, even though there's oil there. Until she was stripped to nothing, and all she had left was the oil. Because the truth is this, as long as there is what MBA can teach us, as long as there's what the society, 
the values and the structure and the culture can give to us. And we ignore the oil, which is the real thing that will give us God's own inspiration, that will give us God's own power, give us access to his glory and his anointing. And brethren, until we come back and we, every other thing has failed and all we have left is this oil. Brethren, at the end of the day, liberty will be a possibility, but a possibility that is very far. I can bet you, sir, if she still has something else at home, she will have still kept trying other things. Let me sell this one. Let me sell that one. But brother, she's done everything she could. And all she had left, until all you have left is Jesus. You can't have a solution. You know, I read the book of John chapter number five. Very interesting story. The man in the pool of Bethesda. The Bible says, Jesus went to him and said, well, what will you need me to do? And now I, I sat down because the Bible records that in that same pool, there were many folks who were sick. Many folks who were plagued. The Bible says blind, lame, crippled, all sorts of people, different infirmity. How come Jesus didn't go to any other person besides this one guy? The answer I found in the response of the guy to Jesus. Jesus said, what would you have me do for you? And the man said, which is the reason why Jesus went to him alone. I have no man. Other people still have folks who will push them. Other people still have options and alternatives. But sir, where I am now, if God does not show up, I'm a gunner. And brethren, until Jesus becomes the very last result, until Jesus becomes the only one on the scene, you see, those options will still be crying to you, calling to you, telling you it is still possible, it's still possible. Try this, try that. Brother, until your house is empty and all you have left is the oil. Liberty is not a possibility yet. I've got nothing. Save the oil. Point number three I think I need to bring out here. Please stay with me. Don't forget, it's the oil and the vessel that made difference between bondage in a generation and liberty in another one. Number three, he said to her, okay, so you have the oil. Oil has never been a problem. The problem is because the truth is this, the oil it doesn't have relevance without a vessel. If you pour oil without a vessel, it's a waste. Can you imagine, ma? You order, you order tea. All right? So I feel, like, I feel like having hot tea. See, you don't want hot tea. What you want is a cup of hot tea. Because if I pour hot tea on you, you won't want it. No one wants hot tea. Everyone wants a cup. Without the cup, hot tea can harm you. So, brethren, even though what I want is very important to me, but brethren, it must come in a container. Without the vessel, it, the tea will harm me. Can you imagine you ordering pizza? And the pizza guy says, well, your pepperoni Hawaiian pizza is here. And it's not in a box. And he's bringing it with his hand. And it's from where I'm from. You don't know what that hand had done. <laughs> You have no clue where the guy is coming from. Brethren, you will not eat that pizza. But brethren, it is not about the box. You see, the, the, the box of the pizza or the cup that you put the tea in is so important. But the value is not the cup. What you need is the tea. But brethren, what we seem to do, brethren, is to emphasize on the container, not the content. Because the truth is this. Put it this way. Now, imagine this background. It's be the church is beautiful, Pastor. And, and, and to God be the glory because you are not going to be here next time I see you. Yeah. Write it down in the name of Jesus Christ. So here it is. Beautiful background. Now, who is, who is, who is larger? 
who occupies more space in your eye, myself or the background? The background. But you see, the beauty of it is this. A lot of us would rather have God in the background. Now the background is bigger than you, but we are here standing. And we are, we are just part of it, but guess what? He's about to take me a picture now. He's focusing on me. Though the picture will pick the background. Now, you please, in the affairs of things, your life isn't your life. It's what God gave you to live for him. What he gave you to do what? To live for him. So there will be no time in your life where he's the background. So he says, okay, um, don't, don't, you need the, you need the vessel. But please just in, understand that for there to be a move, there must be a combination of the vessel and the oil. Then he says, when you go get vessels, don't get little. In other words, brethren, number four, you are the one that determines how far God's going with you. You are the one who determines how far God goes with you. Because the advice is borrow not a few. Because the truth is this, as long as the, the vessel is available, the oil will keep flowing. The moment the vessel stopped, there are no more vessels, the oil ceased. And brother, let me explain this a little further. The extent to which God can work for you, work with you, and walk through you is a function of how much space is available for him. Now, please, I didn't say how much space is available. How much space is available for him? Because there are spaces, but they are occupied by other things. So you see a lot of folks wanting God to do great things with them. But the space they gave God is so little that the, the space God occupies in their heart, okay, is not commensurate to their dream. They want God to, they want to feel crusade they want to fill spaces they want to pastor thirty thousand people and brethren that is nothing for god thirty thousand is still small see god is god has started a thing and we are going to see it see why we are here is so that you can be part of it so you are the one determined who determines rather how far this vessel goes if Though you have so much vessel, but how much of it is for the oil? Now let me explain some things to you. Don't forget what did not allow bondage of a generation to transition or transfer to another generation is the oil and the vessel. So, brethren, what you have at home determines if God can come to the home or if God will not come to the home. What do you have at home? Nothing. Save the oil. Who are you depending on? No one. Save Jesus. <laughs> Somebody went for an interview. And while he was going, went to his pastor who happens to be one of my sons in the Lord. And he said, Pastor, pray for me. I have an interview. And the man of God said, uh, while he saw him, he just gave, had an impression to go and give him his tie. He just bought that new tie. He's worn it a few times. So he said, I don't know. I, I don't, something is telling me I should give you this tie. And that's all he did. Now, he didn't tell him to put on the tie to the interview. All right? That is left to you. God does his part. It's called common sense. When you go to someone for prayer and he gives you tie, that simply means that's the tie for the interview. So the young man wore the tie and went to the interview. Everyone that had gone in came out their heads down. You know, <laughs> the carpenters. When the carpenters dealt with them, the horns rather, <laughs> they were head there. They couldn't raise their head in Israel. They came out of the interview. This young man went in. The moment he sat down, the troubler of Israel in that panel, the, an angel hit his bow well. He, he decided it was time for him to go to the bathroom. Because, ladies and gentlemen, when God is at work, he, he cannot explain it. How we will do it, what he will do. But brethren, we do. That guy went. And the other three people, 
started arguing about his tie. I tell you the Jesus truth. They were arguing. Say, no, it is this designer. Young man, help us solve this matter. That they now showed them the tie. So all of them got up. Come, come, come. Say, ah, this is a different tie. This blah 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 blah. By the time they boo -boo, time is gone. Said we have to talk about this time more. Okay, so you move to the next level of they didn't ask him a question. You come back again. So you've passed this one. No question. Come for the next one. He got the job, obviously. Listen, ladies and gentlemen. When it comes to the Holy Spirit, we make him too small. Because we still have too many things at home. Until you are stripped to the oil alone. Until you are down to the oil. So we know what God does. So you still have other things at home. Other things, what are the things you have? Connection. Use it. <laughs> uh, yeah, after it has failed you, you come back. So you spend that one. It's gone. Then say, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. My classmate, my old friend. Then you will go. And your classmate that you helped will make sure because God did not touch him for you. He is not anointed by God to help you. Even though he has it, he won't give you. Then you live offended again. Now, you went without bitterness, you came back with bitterness. Why? Because we think our ways are his ways. No, when, when we live as mere men, we will, we will suffer as mere men. The Bible says, here are God. I tell folks, I said, the God we serve is supernatural. The Holy Ghost who lives in us is supernatural. The Bible we read is supernatural. The word of God is supernatural. The workings of God are supernatural. Why are you natural? Why are your testimonies the regular thing everyone has? They don't need Jesus to experience the same thing you experience. What is different about this your God? Now let me explain this best very well. So God created the heavens and the earth and gave man authority and said, man, you, you rule the earth. Now, please, let me explain this. What makes you legitimate on earth is the fact that you were born here. You were created here and you have a body. The moment you don't have a body anymore, you are illegitimate on earth. You are all listening. The moment you, your spirit separates from this body, you are illegitimate on earth. And that's why demons are illegitimate on earth. Angels are illegitimate on earth. Oh, you think the after man fell, God could not come immediately and solve the problem? Oh, he could. He can do all things. But he cannot go against what he said. Okay? That will make it illegal. That will make it illegal. When Satan... <laughs> Don't forget, he's a fallen angel, he's a spirit, he's a demon. Okay, so he comes and he wants to tempt man. For him to have legitimacy, he has to go and borrow the body. He needed a vessel. Go and borrow not a few. The vessel of the serpent. So that you have legitimacy here. Otherwise, he's illegitimate. He can't talk to her. Oh, you think God couldn't have just stepped in the sea? God, after they fell, God came into the garden. Isn't that what the Bible says? Adam, Adam, where are thou? I heard your voice and I hid my face. But God can't redeem them yet. Because if he does, it will be illegal. Okay? For him to have relevance here, he needs to, he needs to have a body. And that showed up years later. When unto us a child was born, unto us a son became given. The government became on his shoulders. His name became wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, the prince of peace. The Bible says, and of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom. So brethren, what really, really, really makes you great? The vessel. The Bible says, 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 6, the Bible says, know ye not that you, your body is what? The temple. Now, I tell folks, I said, that's why, see, sex is spiritual. What do you do in a temple? What's a temple for? Worship. So when 
Temple join temple. But people don't see it like that. They just feel that's why it is sacred for marriage. And wherever there's worship, there will be transfer. Somebody receives and someone gives. So everyone you sleep with that is not God appointed for you, you've left a part of you with that person permanently until redemption day. Another thing God said about in this story, this is number five. He said, please, the vessel you have to get must be empty. Empty and clean. Empty and clean. It's got to be empty. Why? You can't feel what is filled. It's not possible. Brother, it's a big deal for you to know that you are the vessel. And all God is looking for is vessel. This oil is available. Oil has never been the problem. Oil has never been the problem. Oil of gladness. Oil of favor. Oil of anointing. What is the oil? The Holy Spirit. His power. His person. His glory. His ability. His goodness. All put together in one. Oil has never been scarce. Never. Anytime you go, the oil has always been available. The problem has been vessels. Vessels. Jesus said to his disciples, he said, laborers, harvest is plenteous. See, le- children are many, but laborers are few. Children are many, but laborers are few. Because most children think that God exists for them. Not there for God. And that's one of the skews that the enemy has thrown at us. Where we think God exists for me. So, uh, no, he created you for himself. Revelation 4.11 Thou are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power for thou hast created how many things? For his pleasure. For the 321 Isaiah, these people are by form for myself. They will show forth my praise. What am I saying, brethren? The vessel has always been the issue. Do you know God? God is a spirit. John 4 24. He can't step here and do things as a spirit without being born here. <laughs> oh no. Isaiah 5. Who shall go? For me. Why does God need someone to go when he's all present? Y'all listening. Why would God need someone to go for him when he's omnipresent? He's everywhere at the same time. God said in Exodus 3, he said to Moses, Moses, I've heard the cry of my people and their affliction. He said, now arise. I'm going to send you to Pharaoh. Why didn't he go himself? He wasn't born here. He wasn't created here. That would be illegal. Eventually, when he had to come, he had to enter into a body, be born of a woman, became like one of us. Matthew 1, 21. The Bible says, And you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. Verse 23. A virgin shall be with child. He shall bring forth a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which has been interpreted God with us. John 1, 14, the word became flesh, dwelt amongst us. We beheld his glory as that of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. But you see, you don't know that it's illegitimate for demons to come and operate here. It's illegitimate. And that's why they look for bodies to enter. So suicide will need a body. <laughs> how will it, how will, how will there be suicide when there's nobody? Spirits can't die. So depression will need a body. So failure will need a body. So heaviness will need a body. So lost will need a body. So mother will need a body. The 
Bathsheba had always been a problem. So what God now did simply was this. The devil threw the serpent, became legitimate. So he was able to get what belongs only to men. Those who are born here. So Jesus, God, had to also step into a body for him to be legitimate here. But brother, the beauty of Jesus' body is this. That vessel. You know, his name is not Jesus. His name is the word of God. It's the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. Now, the moment Jesus decided, I'm going to come through immaculate birth. You know the story. The moment he stepped here, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says, Hebrews 4, we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched by the feeling of our infirmities, but in all things, not some things, all things he was tried and yet he sinned not. So he's able to save to the uttermost those who come to him. Now listen carefully. So here was the vessel. The vessel was the body of Jesus. That vessel, how God anointed Jesus, it didn't say Jesus Christ. The man. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. In other words, there was this vessel and the vessel made room for the oil. And the oil poured on him without measure. So anywhere he went, he was healing the sick, delivering the oppressed, setting captives free. For God, so it's obvious he wasn't talking about his divinity there. Otherwise, God will be with God. They said Jesus of the vessel. Everything Jesus did on earth, he did as man, not as God. There was not one thing he did on earth as God. Not one. Not one. So everything he did in the flesh, he came to show us what's possible for us in the flesh. So he said, these works that I do, you do. And even greater works than this, you do also. Everything he did in the flesh. Walking on water, but get clearance to do that one. <laughs> Raising the, the, the dead. What I mean is, let the Holy Spirit, you must know the difference between the written word and the revealed word. So if a word has not been revealed to you and you go and act on it, some, some young ladies, some young, some youths did some years back in South Korea. And it was because they just don't know the difference between the written word and the revealed word. When a word is revealed to someone, let me give you a typical example. Peter was in the boat. Saw Jesus walking. Said, sir, Jesus, is it you? Said, yes. It is me. That's all Peter needed. Because, see, Jesus has revealed himself to him before. He had toyed all night before now. Caught nothing. Same places he threw the net a million times. Caught nothing. Just by the word. Says, go and throw it down. And Peter said, sir, because you said so, I will do so. And the Bible says he caught a drought of fish. So it, the word had been revealed to him before now. See, some of your experiences God gives you so that you might have... I don't have to go there. So by, from the reveal word, so he, all he needed, if, if Jesus says it is me, from the previous experience, I know. He said, sir, is it you? Jesus said, yeah, bid me come. You see, he didn't say Jesus, he says, yes, I am coming. No. Because he knew what will sustain him is what Jesus says, not what he thinks. Not his own desire. Not his own will. Not his own wish. But if the Lord says. So why, why is it that I, Satan can't afflict me? Not because I desire so. No, because God said so. So if I don't know what God says, I'm in trouble. Simply because God said so. Why won't I die before my time? God said so. Why will he use me for his glory? God said so. Not because I wish or I've read. No. I heard the Lord. The Lord said, Say, sir, if it is you, tell me to come. And Jesus said, come. That was all he needed. 
all he needed. The vessel is the problem. I deal with young adults a lot and some of them, when you tell them the need for you to live your life for God, they think you, uh, you're trying to put them under some commandments, some commands and blah, blah, blah. Oh no, because God can only use vessels that are empty and clean. That doesn't affect his grace over you. It doesn't affect your inheritance in him, but it affects your worth. It affects your worth. What he can trust you with. Sir, ma. <laughs> there are businesses the Holy Ghost wants to start. He can't. He needs a vessel. He can't do it. He needs a there's someone who is legitimate here. There are cities he wants to run through. He needs a vessel. There are finances he wants to use for his kingdom. But in these vessels, who will be able to not just take care of themselves alone? Know that it's my responsibility to do God's bidding with his money. In these vessels, they can pour anointing on. And they will know that everything is doing through them, they got nothing to do with it. They will not give glory to the package. They will give glory to the content. Raising the dead is the cheapest thing. For God to do. Paul said, why do you think it's a big deal that God will raise the dead? His life. I had this young lady, a family, I think, in Africa, I, I led the entire family to Christ. The man was a group captain, which is the equivalent of a colonel in the army. He was in the Air Force. So I do go to the family and teach Bible study, just, you know, Nurture them in the Lord. And they had this eight year old girl. Her name was AJ. I'll never forget her. When everyone is done, after Bible study, AJ will hold me captive for another two hours. This girl was hungry for God. So hungry for God. So I'll sit down another two hours, teach AJ. And as, she, as time went on, our understanding of scripture started baffling me. Told me clearly, this guy has contacted the Holy Spirit. And that's all he wants. Make yourself available. Why do you walk away from temptation? So that I'll be available. Why do I obey him? So that I'll be available. Because the, the, the entire summary of God's desire for man is just three. Number one, know me. Number two, enjoy me. Number three, be available for me to use. That is all God wants with you. That you know him, that you enjoy him, that you are available for. That is all. And in the same light, you can summarize Satan's desire for money to three. Number one, don't know God. Number two, if you know God, don't enjoy God. Number three, if you know God, you are enjoying God, don't be available for God. Satan now felt that if I destroy the vessel, because this guy that is going around healing the sick, making the lame walk, and everybody is turning to God, if I destroy the vessel, the oil will stop. Because the truth is this, the oil adds relevance because it's in a Without the vessel, the oil, even though it's available, is of no relevance. So what they now did was they now decided, let's tear this vessel, the body of Jesus. Let's tear it into shreds. <laughs> so they set it up. But they didn't know they were walking. <laughs> so all he understood then was death. He has never heard of resurrection before. So they tore the body of Jesus, whipped him lacerated from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Shredded the vessel. <laughs> but brother, they didn't know that on the third day that that same body was going to rise. But this time he rose as a glorified body. Have you noticed, sir, ma, that after Jesus resurrected, 
He didn't do one miracle on earth, even though he showed up many times. Not one miracle. It would be illegal. So for this day to continue, I need 120 vessels. Let them gather in the upper room. Because without vessels, I have now become, as it were, legitimately legitimate. I can't do that here because now I'm in a glorified body. So what I need is, I need vessels here. The oil will always pour. So Jesus says, stay in Jerusalem. When you are there and you are showing the Holy Spirit, tell the, telling the Holy Spirit, I'm available for your use, Lord. Use me for your glory. And you shut the door behind you like that woman did. Separate yourself. Separate yourself. There are some things you can't just do. There are some parties you just can't go. It is not for you. It is not for you. Your life gets streamlined. How did they know where to find Jesus? They know where he would be. It is not preaching to the people in town. And anywhere it preaches, you see a crowd. So they didn't see a crowd. So they know he's not in town. So they will go to the mountains because he goes there to pray every night. They didn't find anyone there. They know he usually goes to a garden. Then, obviously, Judas has also told them. But Judas knows where he will take. Want to be an agent of revival? Jumping to the whiskey? You are far. Too far. I'm not saying don't enjoy music. I'm saying your even your spirit will not agree with it. If your spirit is agreeing with it, uh, this the the vessel is there, but the vessel is not empty. If it is empty, it is dirty. And for all this to happen, enter your room. Shut. Must be separated. God can't use an unconsecrated life. Jesus told God, John 17, he said, I sanctify myself because of them. Just because of them. I want God to use my life. I don't want to die. It gives me an ultimate high when I see the devil fail. I don't know about you, he's higher than cocaine. When I see his work destroyed again, it's my ultimate high. And brethren, there's nothing I can do. There is in that secret place when the door is shut. For a season, not that you become a hermit. You don't relate to people at all. That's not what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Jesus now said, this is not a glorified body. It's now illegal for you to walk here. So I'm looking for vessels. The oil is ready to flow anytime. Same principle with the same woman. You're volunteering to be a vessel? Shut the door behind you. The Bible says, and they continued in fasting and prayer and in the breaking of bread. God can't use strangers. He can't use associates. You've got to be born again first. But besides that, you must be someone that is from your heart. You just want to do God's will. That's all. Let me finish AJ's story. So AJ, once in a while I take her, she, take, she, she goes with, she and her older sister. They come to programs with me. So one day AJ was in class and it was break time. It was primary school. And one of the classmates had a bad asthma attack. Apparently, he's been asthmatic. 
And it was break time. The other students ran and called the teacher and the rest of them. AJ rehearsed what she saw during meetings. AJ told two people to stand him up. AJ now laid hand and said, I rebuke you, spirit of infirmity. Leave him and let him go. The moment AJ laid hand on the guy, the guy collapsed as though dead. There are the other two people that were holding him. <laughs> no, fell along with him. It was a huge drop. The, so other students went to tell the teacher, AJ has killed somebody. They came, asked AJ, what did you do? He said, I didn't, I just prayed. They rushed the guy to the hospital. While they were there, the guy still was still under the anointing. Eight year old. Still under the anointing. They tried waking him up. In the process, the doctor kept checking him. And the doctor says, Did you say this guy was asthmatic? They went, did, eventually woke up, did a lot of scan, brand new lungs. He has never, no trace. They didn't have to preach to the parents. Let's stand to pray. I have made you too small in my eyes. Oh Lord, forgive me. And I have believed in the lies that you were unable to help me. But now, oh Lord, I see my wrong. Heal my heart. Come show yourself strong And in my eyes and with my song Oh Lord, be magnified Oh Lord I have leaned on the wisdom of man Oh Lord Forgive me And I have responded to them Instead of your love and your mercy but now, hold oh on, I see my wrong. Heal my heart, come show yourself strong. Lord, in my eyes and with my song, Jesus, be man. Yeah, oh Lord, be man. Come on, lift up holy hands, sing it as a prayer. Be magnified, be magnified. Kapate kobre di di mani. Oh Lord, my eyes, oh Lord, my eyes are on you. Be magnified, yeah, oh Lord. Come on, one more time from the powers of your heart. Sing it as a prayer. Be magnified, be magnified. There is nothing, Lord, you can. He wants 
wants to use you for his glory people oh lord my eyes are on you be magnified oh lord God has, Peter said, God is no respecter of persons. God is looking for his vessels. The Holy Ghost, what simply happened on Pentecost morning, sir, is that oil got poured in vessels. That was all. Oil got poured into but they had to separate themselves they had to volunteer for it God wouldn't he wouldn't he wouldn't walk with you under duress no that's not his MO got born again in 1985 1987 I was spending time I had this three month holiday so what I do is in the morning, I resume to my prayer room, 6 a.m. I close 7 p.m. I did that for three months. I wasn't looking for anything. I wasn't asking God for purpose. I wasn't asking God for anything. I just said, Lord, don't allow my life be a waste. I don't want to be this kind of Christians that they will meet 1,000 sinners in their life and not one of them is saying, I'm feeling uncomfortable. There's something about you that just wants me to come close to God. So I said to the Lord that time, I said, I was a, I was a teenager. I said, Lord, it's, it's either of two things. You take this vessel and make it whatever you want. Or just take me home now and let's end this. Because I'm not just going to be one of those Christians that the devil will be throwing around. And all, rather than be miracle workers, we're looking, I'm looking for miracles. Nah. If that's your, that's what you've designed, I, I'm not up for that. I don't want to sign for that. Because where it brought me from, we don't deal in that. And you only ask me for one thing. Give me your will. There's a death after your birth. All you want to be, let me have it. All you want to do, let me have it. And let me make you what I want to make of you. And that was it. I didn't do that same day because I understood what he was asking for. So I will not be a, math, a professor of mathematical economics anymore. I will not be this anymore and I will be that anymore. But I came back. So a few days later, I said, okay, I'm signing it off. You can have it. Brethren, God is no respecter of persons. God doesn't use people because he called them into ministry. No. If Jesus, even though he be God, did not consecrate himself for God to use, it's not going to happen. The world wants this generational slavery to continue. But the only way we can terminate it, sir, is by the oil and the vessel. Slave masters are around, wanting to enslave again. But our job is through the oil and the vessel, we stop them. And, sir, let me explain this to you, please. I, I, I just suddenly, I, I, have, I'm some, I'm, I have pain in my heart. I don't know why. Because, brethren, I tell you the Jesus truth. You give too much to the devil. We seem to know more of him than we know our God. And guess what? The truth, of, what, the truth is this. What, most of what we know about him are his lies. They are not the truth about him. Only the Holy Spirit can tell you the truth about him. 
And when he does, you'll be disappointed in the devil. I say that again. When the Holy Spirit does, you'll be disappointed in the devil. And you flog yourself for giving him too much relevance. It's like you made your slave your competitor. Suddenly your eyes open that you turned your slave into your competitor. But the problem is this. Most of us have a revelation of the Jesus on earth who was approaching Calvary. That Jesus is not an overcomer. That Jesus is on his way to overcome. The one you really need a revelation of is the one who resurrected. See, it was the lamp that headed to the cross. He didn't resurrect as lamp. He resurrected as lion. When the same John who had been with him on this earth, who was his closest power, when he saw him in glory, when he resurrected, he didn't recognize him. Bible says, I fell down as one dead. The same Jesus. But most of what a lot of us still have in our mind is the Jesus that healed the sick, the one that they beat, the one that was going to the grave. No, that was the one on his way to conquering. You need the revelation of the, the one that conquered. The one that conquered is the one that is seated at the right hand of the Heavenly Father. Far above. Colossians 3, 1, let your affections be on things above. Where Christ is seated by the right hand of the Heavenly Father. Above his prizes and powers. When you do, you will live life anyhow. Life will mean little to you. And the same thing that I've been plaguing you with is the fear of death. You lose it because you now know that this devil doesn't have the cure of death and hell anymore. Revelation 1.18 says, I am he who was dead and alive. And behold, I live forevermore. The first and the last. I have the key of hell and death. Satan does not even have the key to his prison anymore. And the Satan who tempted him in John 4 is not the same one we have now. It's not the same one. The one, that, the one we have now, the Bible says, Colossians 2.15, the Bible says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances which were written against us. Okay, and having disarmed. Disarmed simply means <laughs> and all God wants you to do is just go around and let me live life through you. The same thing I did on earth must not stop. The same life I lived, raising the dead, healing the sick, going to cities and setting them free, must not stop. I just need vessels to live through and continue the same thing. But the devil has reduced our lives to what we have what we own whom we are or rather who we are not whom we are who we are and that's where we find value oh no go and ask Saul Saul was the tallest man in Israel tallest man in Israel he had never met anyone taller than him until he saw Goli when he now saw Goliath, he knew that there are levels. And that the weapon of our warfare are not carnal. It took a man who had shut his door behind himself, spending time with God, to come and look at this tall nuisance and say, This guy that you're all afraid of is uncircumcised. In other words, he has no spiritual backing. A lot of us are giving credence to uncircumcised things. We are afraid of things that are uncircumcised. All he wants today is vessel. Vessels. 
conference like this, one young lady decided, Jesus, I'm not just going to live life anymore. Because all she was concerned about was marriage, 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 marriage. So she stopped living life. And if the devil knows that that is going to keep you from volunteering for God, he will make sure it is his job to make sure that there's no breakthrough there. That's the only way he can make you perpetually relevant in God's agenda. She took up, God said, you know what? He didn't create me to marry. <laughs> God did not create you to marry. He didn't create you to have kids. He didn't create, he created you to have dominion on the earth. How he wants to do that, whichever means he wants to do that, which is a function of his will for you, differs from one another. But brethren, we know he's the kind of God he is. All good and perfect gift. Comment from the father of, no, not father of Christians. Because any light that is not shining is of no relevance. You've been born again 10 years. Some people are not yet free in your family because there's still one person everybody's afraid of. Which Jesus do you serve? Who will set them free? Who is going to come and do it? Which man of God is, is anointed to come and be carrying your own body? If we all are weak and take our territories. I was in Victoria preaching once. That was my first time going there. As I was landing, I sensed a heavy spirit of witchcraft over the island, as beautiful as it is. That's the headquarters of your witches here. <laughs> In case you don't know. It was huge. So, a few nights I was there, I didn't sleep. One of the nights I was preaching, one of them ran from two blocks away and ran into the church and said, she started screaming. You are disturbing me again. This guy should stop all this. So I told the usher. The usher was trying to stop her. I said, leave her. I know why she's here. Let her come. Say, if you want to come and stop the service, come to me. Immediately I took two steps towards her. You think she's Usain Bolt's relative. She went off. Brother, you, we're dealing with... What we're dealing with is beyond your car, your bag, your shoe. That is not an even. It's not an evidence that God is with you. You don't need an, to be a Christian to be rich. But brother, there are riches that does not have sorrow. That one comes from God alone. And brethren, I tell you, when God is done with you, as in blessing you, you will not be able to sleep. But He knows you are not living for that. He can trust you with it. He knows you are not living for that. It's not a deal breaker in your relationship with him. God, if you don't bless me, I won't serve you. I'll pay you money now to leave. You can go. It doesn't need folks like that. It is not. Because at the end of the day, everything, this thing that we're all going to die for, you are leaving it here. Huh? And God help you. Those who didn't work, who didn't labor at all, never did a thing in their life. They will sit down and waste it. And God help you if probably you are in Canada or United States and it is not in the name of your family. The government will first of all lock it down. It's a 1-800 number. Once it is called, the moment you die, the nurse must call so that all your assets are first of all frozen until your bills are paid. But brother, this, this, this thing is more than this. Your legacy is in the lives you brought in. The souls you set free. How much you just allowed him to walk through you. I'm going to have to stop here, but I can't help you further. Because going further is purely your decision. It's not anything anyone can make happen for you. But on a daily basis, we see Satan lose. You see God empowering young people. Even in the marketplace. 
God is using them for his glory. A particular young man in Calgary, his boss in the office, his boss's wife had not been able to sleep. She's Asian. They tried all sorts. Medication, sleep medication, acupuncture, all sorts, never worked. Hasn't slept for for well over a week. I can't remember the exact number of days. Well over a week, I remember. So, he, he invited her to church. So, I told him, I said, you go and pray for her. I'm not going to pray for her. You go and pray for her. He did. While I was praying for her, the power of God knocked her down. So, uh, everybody was waiting that she would get up. She has until we started hearing her snore. They carried her like that, moved her into the car. That's how they got her moved. Slept for a day and a half. She doesn't need you to tell her John 3.16. She's serving Jesus as I speak. Because there's just only one name that is set above every name. Last church I pastored, well, most of the churches I pastored, you don't need to get some things to me. It's not necessary. My ushers can handle it. I'm not kidding. Because we try to let you know that God created you for this. It's not because anyone is a pastor. It's the right of every child of God. You just want to make yourself available. I can't remember me ever praying for a, a maybe one or two times when blind. Yeah, crippled, walking, yes, dead rising, yes. But the blind, I don't have too many testimonies of the blind seeing. Three, four, or five at most, if I, the ones that I know. But the one that was most vivid to me that I'll ever not forget, God used a sister in the choir to give sight to a totally blind person. That's church. church one of our neighbor's baby died overnight so she wanted to take the baby to camp she's not a Christian she's a Muslim but apparently the lady had been she's married to an imam but maybe she had had an encounter with Jesus I don't know and the baby died overnight into the night and she was trying to she insisted they were not going to bury the child until she gets to camp and even her husband imam did not Stop her, because that was the only son. <laughs> it was an elderly man that stopped them. If police, Nigerian police, stops you on the way, 3 a.m. with dead baby, what proof do you have that you are not a kidnapper or ritual killer? So why don't you wait in the morning? This church is here, all right? They can use their boss to take you to the camp in the morning. And the lady agreed. She left the baby there. She came to church. I didn't know. I was preaching that day, and all I did was, I, I, for me, I, I just, I caught the spirit of, I caught death. There's no spirit of death. Death. I felt, now my thinking was that probably they wanted to take somebody here. I didn't know someone was already dead. I had no clue. So I stopped my sermon and told everyone, stand up and let's just pray in the Holy Ghost. While we're praying in the Holy Spirit, the baby sneezed. Came back to life. This was baby witness. Half the streets came to church without evangelism. That's what the Bible says, 1620 Mark, and they went about preaching. The Lord walking with them, with signs and wonders. Paul said, I did not come to you in the enticing words of men's wisdom. Jesus uses miracles to tell souls he's alive and well and that they should come to him. He doesn't even need your faith. He just needs you to want to be used. Change the way you're living. Shut your door for a while.
When they set you loose to talk to God. And I'm going to pray with those who want to be prayed for. But please, one thing I always throw out there is this. If you have not made up your mind not to deliberately engage in sexual sin, don't allow me to pray for you. That's all I will say. If you have not made up your mind. Not deliberately. Live in sexual sin. Don't allow me to pray for you. Otherwise, please, I'll be here to pray with you. Something's coming on you. I'm not, God's not putting anything new on you. Whatever cloud that hovered on his grace and his anointing on you is just about to tell loose. Limiting and confining walls that have not allowed you freedom of spiritual expression. It's about to go off. Canada will be delivered. And guess what? All God, God it's a great honor that God is telling you to be part of the labor force. To pray for the land, to shed light on the land. Your paradigm will shift. The way you see things will be different. God will lend you his own eyes so you see things from his perspective. Like the daughter of God said, said, Lord, let what pains you, let it pain me. That's what he's looking for. Those whom vessels are available that you pour the oil. And those 120, sir, all of us here are a product of those 120 people. All of us here. I'll give you a minute to just talk to God. You could take any position. You could sit down, kneel down, whatever you want to do. Se kora ne no baje ye de wo se ate I'm not sure to help me with this, please. Hallelujah, 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 tonight he told us come on and Hallelujah. 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 Father, we receive fresh fire tonight. Spirit of the living God, we receive fresh fire tonight. Lighten up every life. Lord, lighten up every altar. Father, Lord, fire upon. Fire runs in our bones one more time. The Bible says your word is like hammer. Break it into pieces like fire in our bones. And Father, we ask for tonight, oh God. Thank 
Katola Boke Ashotomiande. Come on, lift up your voice and pray in the Holy Ghost just for a minute. Something is about to come. It's about to pour. Freno Campre Dizesiate is liquid fire. He can't tell up the end of Pahenomiete. Hallelujah! 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 Casomenon Pateca Dienoseta. Oh Lord, use me for your glory. Use me to set the captives free. Lord, live life through me from today, Lord. I sign it off. You could have anything and everything and just do as you please, oh Lord. Kasovra bombe la kiakipate. Two people here used to operate in the gift of the Holy Ghost, but not anymore. God is reigniting you tonight. There's a stirring coming up in your spirit, man. Oh, please talk to God. Tell him, just open up your heart to him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Resore e fore mante pepiniamiani. Gle canon de luge so pala tonte la gia copelani. You just need a spiritual awakening. That's all you're asking for tonight. That's Lord, I need a spiritual awakening. You're not living in sin or anything. No, no, no. You just need a spiritual awakening. For some reason, you've just, your zeal and zest, your enthusiasm for the things of God is not where you used to be. Could you, could you just walk towards me here and I want to pray with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to need some ushers to walk with me, please. Oh, God is taking hold of some folks tonight. Glory be to your name, oh Lord. The Lord says to tell somebody, I will set you on fire. And the same thing you've been telling me to remove from your life. By virtue of me setting you on fire, you will not see them anymore. In other words, God is saying the reason why they've been there is because you are just the one that have not that have refused to shift and move away from where you are. God says you will not just see them anymore. Mm, hallelujah. Mm, hallelujah. Come on, let's worship together, everyone. Hallelujah, say hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, lift up your two hands, man. Lord, we receive fresh fire. Lord, is staring to come in our life. Lord, thank you. Lord, I stand awakening the prophetic in her right now. In the name of Jesus. Lord, the things she used to see that she couldn't see anymore, the impression she used to have that she seemed lost, I awaken them in the name of Jesus. We cause a staring in Jesus' mighty name. Fill our new Holy Spirit and use my sister for your glory. Use her for your glory. Thank you. God bless you, man. You can go back to your Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God can use one person to, to bring a 500 people to church in one night. I'm telling you what has happened before. Just because someone dared to want to serve God. 
I don't know you're hungry and you're thirsty and yawning Lord use my life for something just join I just, I'm just going to impact you and you can all go back to your seats you just want God to use you for something you want to be part of his move you don't want this revival thing to just be a story you heard but please all I will say again is if you've not made up your mind not to deliberately live in sexual sin don't allow me lay hands on you please that, that's, that's all I will say hallelujah father thank you I need someone to help me in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I impart you with grace God take this thing from you and takes it to another level what he's made you pregnant with for him in the spirits your season to birth is here Lord deep as us to deep face as us to face as in water so does the heart of a man to a man Father I impart her with every giftings of grace that she needs to do this assignment I feel like God Almighty with every ability in the spirit that Jehovah this vessel will never be clogged Lord it will never be clogged it will be a thoroughfare always move out from the realm of anointing to authority in the name of Jesus you can put it on the seats next person please no he just quick father use him for your glory father I ask for your resurrection a resurrection a resurrection Lord has walked deep with you before I ask for a resurrection thank you Lord to tell you very soon people are going to shout hallelujah over you for whatever is outstanding in your life God says I should sing over you I put it in your hand this very night you came out for him to use you he will use you but God says he's going to just let you know he has been waiting in this place for you and what had been a border God says people will join you in shouting hallelujah so he says to sing. Hallelujah. Let your joy return. I remove the garment of heaviness. Joy. Joy. Thank you, Lord. Father, use her for your glory. Mama, I'm going to need you, please. Could you help me put your hand here? Lord Jesus, I ask you. Thank you for doing what only you can do. Thank you for perfecting this healing. And thank you, God Almighty, for bringing the reward. Father, use her also, Lord, to set captives free. 
the Lord is putting upon you an anointing to deliver those who are afflicted. An anointing to deliver those who are afflicted. Especially in the area of infirmities. Those whose infirmity as a result of demonic affliction. There's an anointing on you now, ma'am, to set them free to the glory of his name. Father, she's been wanting you, waiting for this moment. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But thou God that shift for me, my glory and the lifter up of my head. The Lord lift your head above your enemies round about you. Authority is coming on your tongue, ma. So we have to be careful from today what we say. Authority is coming on your tongue. There is an anointing to declare and it will happen over the lives of people. But God says, be careful what you say also about yourself. Don't ever say anything you want Jesus to make happen concerning yourself from today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Use her, Lord. Oh, Lord, use her. Father, I strengthen the knee of this intercessor again. Lord, I strengthen the knee of this intercessor again. We strengthen your knee again, intercessor. Back to your duty posts. Yes, he's going to use you. You begin to see his effect in the family. He's going to use you. You're going to see his effect in the family. So God will have you have an assignment of setting the family free first. And the Lord says to tell you, he's assuring you, what you're afraid will slip out of your hand will not. Don't be afraid. There's such power to have. There's such so much anointing on this lady. Could you put it on her, please? Just put it over her. Yep. Be soaked in power, but drenched in glory. In the name of Jesus. Help her to a chair, please. Ah, no, no, she can't stay on the chair. Help her down gently. Gently, gently. Never down gently. Father, use her for your glory. For there is therefore now no condemnation unto them who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ has made us free from the law of sin and death. I break the fear of death. Life is all over you, my sister. Don't be afraid. You can't die before your time. You can't. You cannot. So don't let it cross your thought anymore. Don't, don't allow it to dwell anymore. If the Lord tarries, you have long days to live. Long days. Oh Lord Jesus, thank you. Spirit of the living God, fill her with your glory. 
Let her know what you want to use her for. In the name of Jesus. Give me your hands, man. Father, thank you. Receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let it settle in your heart. Abide with you and not leave. Let the hunger, a deep hunger for Christ come over you. Run in this your might. The Lord make you of significant company and separate you from whatever is not working well for your destiny. Join you to those and the things that will work well for your destiny. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. An agent of revival. An agent of power. I activate the workings of miracles in your life tonight. From tonight, I activate the workings of miracles. In the name of Jesus. Again, oh God, let these bowels erupt with the fountain you've put there, Lord. The time of his revealing to Israel has come. The time of his revealing to the world and his generation has come. Thank you, Lord. Father, use him for your glory. Receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Create deliberate Bible study time. Hmm? God is going to show himself to you in his word. Okay? Father, thank you. Let your beauty be seen. Lord, she has fought and she needs you to help her. And Father, arise on her behalf and fight. Whatever is due to her that walked away, I command you to walk back. Father, fight for her. Lord, where she cannot defend herself, Lord, stand up for her defense. Use her for your glory. Father, thank you. Come alive in your quest for God. Let the hunger of God consume you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. Come on, a place do be the non blastic design so far. Father, use this preacher, Lord. Avana, heaven, Tom Frasiki, yes, up and yummy. Lord, use this preacher. Lord, help him know what you want and what he intend. Grant him grace. Lord, from a, t from a young age, Lord, begin to show forth. Show forth in the name of Jesus. The 
young man I just prayed for now. Just keep following God. There's a hand of God over you for ministry. Don't worry, we'll make it on it. You know, those, gone are the days when people think pastors are poor or minister of the gospel. I don't know which area, but he told me clearly his hand, his hand is on you to use you in ministry. It doesn't have to be full-time. I'm not full-time. Okay. But that simply means you, you can't live life like others anymore. It doesn't mean you won't play. I play, I play soccer. I don't know why you have to tell me. He has me telling you that. Okay? I play, I have fun. But my time with God is very secret. His hand is very, very heavy on you. He's going to answer you the questions you have in your heart. Some things are not clear to you. Okay? Or be, just be open to him. Just tell him he should, he should just say whatever he wants to say. I know me are praying. Okay. God bless you. Anointing for this calling. The wisdom and the dexterity for it. That will throw you into global limelight. For the gospel you receive now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you. Some folks will begin to bring it down a bit. Some of these young men will begin to pray. It will just be a burden for them to come together to pray. It's, it's an innocuous prayer move. It's to birth some um, dimension of the supernatural in the house. In the house. God is going to use them significantly. They are going to be having a lot of young folks coming. They're bringing that type. It's going to, it's, it's a move, but it's first of all going to start with a lot, just they coming together and praying. Let them not be discouraged. Lord, Father, you know, thank you. Lord, thank you for helping him to forgive now. Thank you for lining his path with your goodness. A great door and an effectual had been opened unto you. God gives you a voice over your adversaries. Lord, use him for your glory. Young man, God wants to put money in your hands. God wants to put money in your hands. The dimension of the of the of, of this calling is more of you financing the gospel. But God does want He doesn't want us to run on our own wisdom anymore. In fact, from today you have to abandon that fully and absolutely. All right. Um, there's a reason why he's been frustrating some things that should have gone through because he doesn't want that to be your own way. Lift up your two hands, sir. He's now going to give you his own wisdom on how you're going to go about some things. You don't ever take the glory, it is he walking through you in his own wisdom and dexterity. Lord, thank you. And when the Lord starts settling you, people who did not take care of you, you must take care of them. You heard me? When he starts settling you, people who did not take care of you, that's what I'm hearing clearly, those who did not take care of you, who did not even believe you would get here, they didn't, some of them did not want you to get here. You will take care of them. Pay their children's school fees, okay?
I put upon you the glory and the power, the honor, and the wisdom of God to get wealth and to use it for the kingdom. You will not prioritize yourself ahead of God. You will never prioritize your need ahead of God. You will not be lofty in your heart. Pride will not cut you short. You be gracious to those who were harmful to you. Amen. You will help those who refuse to help you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you. Lord, use him for your glory. Thank you. <sighs> use him for your glory. When I touch you, I'm just experiencing a breeze. It's just, it's a wind. It's a wind. It will blow away every shaft in your life. It will take away the dross from the silver so that they will comfort the vessel for the finer. Touch in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Use him for your glory, Father. Thank you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Father, thank you. Help him stand. From today, I severe you from relationship God, God doesn't want you in apato pelu kom bridasie vida hano ko jeno etieno zase teko rate jose there's greatness here but uh, who you hang out with will determine if you get there so father i pray lord god almighty whatever is around him not walking for where he's going lord i ask for his severing Whatever he initiated that is not good for him, Lord, I shut it down today. We receive that which is yours only. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Use him for your glory. Thank you. Lord, use him for your glory. Receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Father, thank you. After every gifting of grace, you need to be who you want to be for God. And above all, whom he wants you to be, you receive today. No more spiritual weakness. You have the strength and ability to get up at the time you ought to get up. To do what you want to do in righteousness at the time in Jesus name Lord thank you Hallelujah. thank you thank you thank you Father, use Nathan for your glory. Use Nathan to bring many to so to Christ. Use Nathan to set the captives free and heal the sick. Let Nathan become a news in righteousness for you. In Jesus' name. shaking a celebrity yeah. glory be to God Father, thank you, Lord for your glory blessed be your name oh God 
praise him for your glory, Lord. In Jesus' name. Father, thank you. We give you glory and praise. I release your power into these hands. I activate the healing anointing upon your life. The burden you've been having, let it receive. It receives anointing and power to make happen. From today in the name of Jesus. You could lay the hand on yourself. Father, thank you. Glory be to your holy name. Use her for your glory, Lord Jesus. Use her for your glory, Lord Jesus. How are the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel against the Lord that is anointed, saying, Let us hold them in the, let us break their bands asunder. But the Lord will hold them in the rich, and he who sits in heaven will laugh at them in his sword displeasure. For there is no enchantment against Joseph, no divination against Israel. It shall be said that this is what that the Lord wrath. Psalm 7, verse number 9. Oh, that the wickedness of the wicked shall cease. By the anointing tonight, I terminate every walk that seem to want to limit in the name of Jesus Christ. Sister, from today, you gain ground. Advance significantly. Advance significantly in the name of Jesus. I put upon you the mark of the Lord Jesus. Let no hindrance hinder you anymore. Let no worry worry you anymore. I command the spirit of heaviness. Lift off in the name of Jesus. Be full of joy. One, two, disappointments. Never again. In Jesus' name. Father, use him for your glory. Thank you, Lord. Father, thank you, Lord, for this house. We are tearing Lord's words apart. Lord, we are ready for the new season. And thank you for these vessels you're using. Come alive in grace and in power. Whatever is conflicting with your love for God. And Father, Lord God Almighty, we lift your knowledge above it tonight. In the name of Jesus. Lord, use him for your glory. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lift up your two hands. Mm, hallelujah. Somebody was singing next to me here. Well, I was hearing a good surprise. Oh, okay. Can you give her a microphone for me? Oh, now Monday party, Kobejin is up, honey. Lord God Almighty, I pray. Ideas that will tear through walls. Solutions that will be global. That will create generational inheritances. That Lord, both this generation and the one after will use for your glory. I release into him and for him. Receive the anointing and the power of the Lord. To walk in treasury with God. In the name of Jesus. And let your evangelical drive come alive again. In Jesus name hallelujah thank you Lord fill him with your goodness use him for your glory amen hallelujah
want to use this medium to appreciate everyone um, here those that have gone and those that are connecting online thank you so much for um, joining today it is not me that you have come to honor this is jesus this is our father's business something has started in our spirit man today and the fire in our bones is to continue to burn for God because I know that, that God himself has ignited revival in our land and it will happen in our families, in our societies in our communities, in our province and in this nation and to the end of this influence there will be no end in Jesus name I just want to use this opportunity to appreciate um, everyone who has ministered here today Pastor Piki Olavale, thank you for being a huge blessing to us. We love and we celebrate you. Um, Pastor Bayo Aulere, thank you so much. Um, Pastor Johnson in absentia. I had three special graces in the house today, and these are the people I look up to. I see a father figure in them. And God has positioned them in my life. And having all three of them under one roof, this is the day I will never forget in my life. Thank you for being a huge blessing to us. Pastor Shibola, thank you for honoring us. God bless you, man. Pastor Runke, thank you so much for being a blessing to us. Pastor Solomon, Reverend Ken, Pastor James Solushisi, thank you everyone that made it here today. Thank you for honoring God. The instrumentalist to uh, Minister Michael Manhans, um, Israel Osars, thank you so much for being a blessing to us. I appreciate every one of you. And I like this medium. I would like to use this medium to also appreciate all the crew, the crew behind um, this, this conference, the crew behind Master's Fit Network. Um, my husband is one of them, myself, Kenny Bajomo. Um, I have Cornelius Holiday in um, New Brunswick. I have uh, Shade Ogunlusi in Alberta. And I have um, Sister Ayobami. I have Sister Ayobami too in Alberta. Although these people, they are three. Sorry if you can have your seats, please. Come in. Those people are not here today because they lived far away. But to the glory of God, we've all put all these things together. And I celebrate you. I honor you. I know you're connected online. Thank you for all you do for the Lord. Thank you for uh, those that joined the prayer team too. Said we were about 10 of us. And we had eight days of prayers for this. And seeing this coming to manifestation, it is, this is beyond words. It's beyond words. Thank you so much for everyone for raising the altar of prayer. Thank you so much for connecting. Thank you for believing in this vision and for running with it. I pray that God himself will honor everyone in Jesus' name. I want to use this medium to also um, appreciate my mom. She's not here. She's, I believe she's watching too. Thank you for, for raising a child. Thank you for raising your children in the way of the Lord. To be on fire for God. Uh, I pray that the Lord God himself he will keep you alive to see many more fruitful things in Jesus' name. I also want to use this medium to appreciate my siblings. I have three of them here. I have my other brother here too. Um, thank you so much for the love, for the support. I appreciate all that you do. I appreciate you for, for supporting this vision and everything that you do. Thank you so much to all the volunteers. Everyone you see wearing the shirts today, please help me say thank you to them because they've been a huge a part of this. Thank you so much for coming through. God bless and honor every one of you in Jesus' name. I also like to I also like to uh, say a very, very, very big thank you to uh, Ife today for anchoring this program. Thank you so much. That was an amazing um, amazing organization. Like um, I don't know what I would have done. I, could, I can't even do half of what you've done today, but thank you so much for coming through. God bless you. I would like to also thank Peter Stone too for handling the red carpet. Thank you so much, everyone. God bless you and honor you. And last but not the least, I would like to uh, appreciate my husband. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the love. Um, I think
thing to do. He only has slept for one hour. He's been like all night walking in the background. He's always the behind the scene guy, but yeah. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the love. Thank you for running this vision with me. Um, and also to my kids too. I say God bless you. The sacrifices, I know it's not always easy, but yeah. I pray that God will continue to strengthen them in Jesus' name. So to everyone, I want to say a very, very big thank you to everyone that has stayed back and for those that are still connected online. I know it's beyond the scheduled time, but I know that the blessing that we've received here tonight would overflow even to every part of our lives. And every time invested here tonight is not a waste. It's just part of what we have invested into becoming all that the Lord wants us to be. I pray that the Lord corner and bless each and every one of us in Jesus' name. So uh, to close us off in prayer, today is my very own pastor. So he's the shepherd. He's a shepherd to me. So uh, I would like to have the honor of him to close us off in prayer and to do a prophetic declaration over the nation of Canada. And I believe that uh, we, are all, we are all charged off. So please help me celebrate Pastor Bayou Havalera. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What an awesome evening we have had. If you please, can you have this? I want all of you to please do stand. You know, without moving back and forth, we're about to dismiss the service. But before we, you know, do that, I want to, in absence, of course, I know he's watching. What a tremendous, tremendous... <laughs> tremendous ministry of the world and the dimension of the ministry of the Holy Ghost that we have experienced even this evening. Come on, let us honor the gift that God has sent to us. Pastor Kunle Olawale. Come on, you can do better than that. Hallelujah. Uh, man of God, we salute God's grace. We celebrate you. We thank God for the sacrifice, uh, for what you do, uh, not just in you know, North America, but practically globally. Uh, uh, Pastor Olawale, you know, was sharing with me, you will be traveling again on Tuesday morning uh, to the continent of Africa to continue the work of the ministry, you know, raising, you know, future leaders. And I really want to thank God for that sacrifice. You will be leaving very early tomorrow morning. Uh, and I believe not only you have had an encounter with the grace of God, God have, you know, spoken to each one of us in an individual way, the same way you have spoken to us corporately. And I want you to please take this very seriously what God have done today. And of course, I know thousands, if not, you know, ten of thousands, people online have connected to this. I know you can watch this again, you know, so that you can get yourself immersed in that which God have, you know, accomplished in our midst today. So I want to encourage you uh, to do that. So, thank you so much, man of God. And we believe God that we will see you very soon again. Amen. Now we believe you are going to see soon again, especially in the family of Center of Life Church. What a blessing. What a blessing tonight. Uh, and just for you to know, and I think I was talking to Abigail about this, uh, and this is very important. And I want to you know, thank God also for your life. And thank God for the life of you and Ezekiel. And uh, you know, when you mentioned about when the Lord prompted that I should ask you to just come to church to pray, I can't even remember until you mentioned it. I forgot it. Uh, the Lord just, I think it was one Sunday service. And I said, I will be available to pray with anyone. Just come to the service. I'm going to be here. Anyone that shows up, I believe there's going to be a release. And of course, you know what? Um, since that time, you are, this is the second meeting. Uh, I'll be going to share with me the vision that the Lord has put in our heart. What God is doing. And I said, I'm with you. I'm for you. And whatever God wanted to do, know that you have my 100% endorsement. Why? Because we want the gospel to be preached. We want the name of Jesus to be lifted up. You know, and I just remember the word of the scripture. You know, that says in 3 John verse 
chapter 1, verse 4. Of course, third John is only one chapter. And I read this. So that you, you know, it gives me so much joy. And I read it from the Passion Translation. He says, it is the greatest joy of my life to hear that my children are consistently living their lives in the ways of truth. I repeat it again. It is the greatest joy of my life to hear that my children are consistently living their lives in the ways of truth. You and many others courageously have stepped out to pursue the dream in your, in your heart, the vision that God birthed within you. And I've seen people doing it in art and entertainment. I've seen it do it through media. And uh, you have all received my endorsement and my support and my prayer. And this is another dimension. And I'm so happy you know that and I, I believe God I know it to be so you know as a leader in the kingdom as well that God has started something wonderful great powerful in somebody's life today uh, and, and it's such a, a phenomenon so your life is a joy what you have done today today have given me one of the joys of my life you know to see you step into God's assignment and I know of the increase of God's grace in your life there shall be no end. You are going from glory to glory. In Jesus' mighty name. And can I announce to all of my children in the faith, it will give me a great joy when you approach me and say, Daddy, you know, God put something in my heart. I want to touch lives. I want to touch, you know, kingdoms. I want to touch nations. I want to touch, you know, some specific aspect in the marketplace. It may not be a conference like this where we have, you know, something that we have to bring a minister. It could be, a, you know, a, a, a talk, it could be a show, it could be something that the Lord put in your heart, but that will point people to Jesus, that will glorify the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Step out, step up, and let Jesus use your gift and your talent. If this message that you have received today did not do anything in your life, uh, I don't know what to do. And so this is a very powerful moment for all of us. And even those of us that have been working with Jesus, it's just a, another, you know, uh, reminder of what God wants to do with our lives. I will give God praise for that. Come on, let us honor Abigail. Celebrate her. Appreciate her. And I said to, to myself, I'm going to wear this t-shirt today to identify with you fully and to let you know that we are with you and all that is that God will do in your future. And I'm saying to all of you too, do something with what you have received today so that the name of Jesus can be glorified. And so, thank you all of you that have been here and I have whispered something to the media that is very important and this is important and I will be communicating tomorrow. This message that we have received from Pastor Enokunle today must be listened to by every member of Center of Life Church. Every member that want to live an impactful life. Workers, anybody that want to make a difference. Anybody that wants to live for eternity. Anyone that wants to make a change in his life. Anyone that really wants not to live for self, but to live meaningfully and to make a difference. And I will be promoting that. And I will be encouraging many other people to do that. And I can't wait to have, you know, uh, Pastor, you know, Olawale with us. And by the time I'm going to have it back, you won't be the one to host it. I will be the one to host it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's going to be a wonderful experience. You know, since I've said it from the pulpit, you know, Pastor Lawley, you cannot escape from it. <laughs> we love you. We love your spirit. We love the grace of God upon your life, the genuineness and the tangibility of God's grace. We give God praise for that. Now, you know, I believe so much, you know, uh, the prayer that I've been praying. And now I'm not going to do injustice to what has been said. Say with me, Canada is blessed. We have already proclaimed over the nations and ministers have come forth to proclaim it, to declare it. Come on, affirm with me, say, Canada is blessed. In the name of Jesus. Now I want you to see because we are speaking by faith, I'm not saying Canada will be blessed. I'm calling those things which are not as though they were. They were. Not only that, we believe we have received tonight. Come on, say with me. Canada is blessed in the name of Jesus. Someone shout it loud. Canada is blessed in the name of Jesus. 
Come on, say for the last of Canada is blessed in the name of Jesus. I pray over you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine continually upon you. May the Lord grant you rest round about. May you fulfill your eternal destiny. May this day begin a new thing, even in your life. Remember, our team, even in the church, this month is what? A month of what? And I think this is very powerful. So may the Lord sustain your dream. And may the Lord supply resources for it to come to pass. In the mighty name of Jesus. I will do this and I think the Lord just brought to my heart before I dismiss all of you to go. You will notice that there, there was no request for offering in this meeting. Abigail did not ask, that is, let me put it this way, the Master's Fit Network, neither Yet TV requests that we should receive an offer. But let me say this to you. And I believe so much in this. This is true. Why? Because their heart is not in money. They have spent a lot of money to put a lot of things together. This is so glorious and colorful. But I want you, those of you that are listening to me right now, and I want to encourage you, they never ask me to do this. This is not of compulsion. But if you have received something, I want you to give towards this. I want you to sow a seed. Are you, are you with me right now? It is not by force, but I'm just saying this to you. Now, for those of you that are here, you know who she is. You know who they are. Walk up to them and bless. I want you to understand this. You know, and give your size. Give your level. Praise the Lord. Whatever the Lord put in your heart, the Lord will honor it. Use us as a point of contact for that release of the Spirit and release of that which God has already ordained for your life, especially as connected to your own destiny and vision. So I want to encourage you. Walk up to them and sow a seed. And sow what a seed. If you are online and you are wondering, how can I get to them? You know, if you send it to Center of Life Church, you know, in care of Center of Life Church, but address to Master Fit Network or to Ye TV or write a check to Ye TV, it will get to them. Or just call our ministry and you want to get it to them, it will get to them. I'm going so into it. My son and my wife, before we came here, we have, you know, consider prayerfully, consider what you're going to give. Now, so it's very important for you to know, you know, that when things like this are happening, it is very important. Hallelujah. Can I also say this? For those of you that have spiritual understanding, the man of God is extremely blessed. If you want to take another step and say, I want to even bless the man of God. I want to sow into his ministry. This man is, you know, touching lives globally. You know, he's father to fathers, mentor to mentors. He has been in the ministry for years, you know. I've been hearing about it for a very long time. But for the first time, privileged to be able to have what? You know, opportunity to be under his ministration. Such a blessing to me today. Abigail, I told you, we have planned our vacation to travel. My wife has started on Friday. We're supposed not actually to be here. But I said, no. It is the greatest job of my life to hear my children are consistently living their life in the ways of the truth. I said, my wife, we will stop everything. We will cut whatever we are doing short. And making sure that if nobody is even there, we are there to show our support 100%. Are you with me right now? And so, and we are here today, and you know what? I, I don't have to say this you know, publicly, but I'm saying this to you to let you understand. In retrospect, you know what I told myself? I thank God I'm here. I thank God I'm here. I thank God that my children are here. Are you getting right now? I thank God that hands were laid on them. Amen? Because the minister was affirming some things that you have prayed for, that you have received. This is very important. That's why you need to understand the Kairos moment and when the Spirit of God is moving. Please, I believe they have refreshment for all of us. And please, if you want to sow to the ministry of Pastor Enokunle Olawale, meet with Abigail, meet with Ezekiel, and they will guide you on how to do that. And if you want to do it right now, why is he still here? I'm telling you, they will lead you to, to him so that it can also be a blessing. So we have a lot of refreshment, I believe, provided 
by you know, Master Fit Network and Year TV. And please let us celebrate them. And of course, congratulate you know both of them. I'm talking about Abigail and Ezekiel. I love this couple. Their heart is in the right place. They love the kingdom. They love the work of God. And God has gone ahead of you to make our crooked way straight. You are blessed in Jesus' mighty name. So service dismissed in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>